we are going to dive into this thing. Um, for anyone who doesn't know who we are um, or manage by stats, we're going to show you a little commercial on that in just a second. But my name is Curtis Johnson. I am the president of Manage by Stats. Uh, sitting next to me is the chief of chief operations officer, and that's uh, Mark Jepson. We also have a couple uh, distinguished guests with us, and and we're all I'll introduce you to them. You know, in, in a brief manner first. And we also have a little video so you get an idea of what it is that they do. But we're joined by Will Seabrook, who is the CEO of Light Touch Media Group. And then also Devin Litchfield, who is also the president of, uh, he's like my counterpart over there. He's a the president of Light Touch Media Group. So we, I will dive into a little bit more because here's the thing. We probably, I don't know that we've had I don't want to say like a more distinguished guest, but someone who's more of a professional in their area, as much as Will and Devin are in the media production space. So I'll get into that in a minute, but um, we are going to show you just a little um, commercial here in just a second. So you can see first, we'll first show you, <clears throat> sorry, a little piece on Managed by Sats. And then immediately after that, we'll show you one on Light Touch. Go ahead. As an Amazon seller, you're dealing with constant challenges. How do I effectively drive traffic to my products profitably, manage my inventory efficiently, and find and launch my next successful products? How do I rank on page one for these keywords and then stay there? MBS offers an all-in-one suite of proven tools and consulting services used by successful Amazon sellers to stabilize, improve, and explode their businesses. MBS provides tools for the entire Amazon lifecycle, from finding products, analyzing competitors, structuring your listings, managing inventory, analyzing metrics, all the way to noting when you've made positive or negative changes, as well as tools to convert your existing sales into repeat buyers and find others out there just like them. We offer an entire PPC agency that handles every aspect of PPC for you, or we give you the tools and one-on-one -on -one coaching to effectively manage and optimize your campaigns and listings yourself. For those just getting started with PPC, we understand it can be overwhelming. So we offer a comprehensive course to teach you best practices step-by-step. -step. We also offer courses and service for both on and off Amazon marketing. For example, how to create and use video and video ads, which have proven to be one of the most successful forms of Amazon marketing. And all of our solutions and tools are designed to isolate what you and your competition are doing right and implement those changes to improve sales and profits. Our entire team is here for one purpose, to ensure you have every resource you need to succeed. To start a free trial or to see how we can help you, visit us at managebystats.com. That's kind of for anyone who isn't familiar with Managed by Stats that's on here. But the one that's obviously much more important is I want you guys to get an intro to, uh, I want you guys to uh, <laughs> have a chance to see a little bit more though about what Light Touch Media Group does. Because honestly, most of you guys probably are familiar with who Managed by Stats is. And Light Touch is probably something new for you. Uh, you probably haven't had a chance to you know, work with them unless you are a Fortune 100 company or really a fortune 100 company. But um, so this little short video that um, they have for you here is just sort of an expose of some of the work that they have done. And you also have a chance to see some of the customers that they've done work with. And then that kind of lays out sort of the introductions. And then after that, what we'll do is we're going to dive in and we're going to go over sort of the importance of getting into 21st century marketing and really you know, understanding how important this visual age is to your Amazon business and how important it is to really be taking advantage of some of the strategies and some of the insight that Will and his Will and Devin are really going to, you know, deliver here. He he's we've gone through quite a lot of work to put together the training that we have for you today. So much so we we've been digging through marketing text to really pull for you also some of the key marketing, um, I guess most most important fundamentals. So you've got a lot to look forward to through the next little bit that we're gonna you know be training here. But before we get into that, go ahead.
All right, everybody. Okay, so that I'm sure you saw there the key points of like, you know, some of the companies they've worked with. Um, Will and Devin, just to kind of round out that introduction, Will and Devin have been in this industry for quite a long time. Um, professionally, they've put together over 6,000 commercials for companies like you saw there, American Express, Shell, Amazon, uh, they were handpicked by Amazon to help with over the top ads for select, you know, customers. They were literally handpicked by Amazon. So if anyone is going to have an inside skinny into what you guys as sellers should know or should be doing to take the best, take best advantage of, you know, the content game, sponsored brand video ads, they're definitely going to be the ones that know this probably better than anyone else. So um, I also have here for anyone who has questions in the PPC realm, you know, obviously Mark, as most of you guys do know, has been a seller for years, uh, very accomplished in this area. They've also used um, Light Touch Media Group to produce content for one of their brands. Yep, yeah. Absolutely. And um, I saw, you know, uh, and I was talking to your wife about that. <laughs> sort of a strange way to put it, but they're obviously partners in the brand. And she was telling me that you guys have seen, you know, huge returns from that particular action. Yep. So yeah, date coincident with that video. Yeah. Meaning yep. the exact date we threw the video and, and those video ads in the changes you've seen. So yep. that's obviously, you know, a really amazing thing. So Mark will be able to help any questions. We're going to do a full Q and A at the end of this whole thing. So you'll have a chance to pick Will's brain, Devin's brain, my brain, Mark's brain. Any, any questions that you have relating to PPC, any questions you have related to video ads, video content production, we're here for you on that. So that's for you to look forward to at the end. Um, right now, um, AV man, Danan, king of AV, are you ready with slides? Okay, good. And then, so we're obviously talking here, Amazon's best kept PPC secret. And it's not a secret, you all know that. But the whole concept behind that is that, um, with how, how difficult it seems to be for a lot of sellers to get into producing the video required for these ads, it ends up acting like a secret. Is it really a secret? Of course not. But it's something that's a very underutilized advertising tactic that doesn't really, um, when, when we did, we did a full review of every advertising account that we have in Managed by Stats. And the reason we did this is we wanted to see, okay, what really what is a, a tool or a strategy out there that most people aren't taking advantage of? And that's why we went the route of um, good. So we went, we went through and studied all of these points and found that video ads are one of the most underutilized advertising types um, out there, period. So that's kind of a preface to give you an idea why, why we've been marketing it as a PPC secret, because for most of you, it probably, you understand it as well as most would understand a secret they haven't been told. So we live in a visual age. Um, so the, the main point here is that most of you experience this um, on a daily basis between social media and anytime you go online, you are being bombarded with thousands of messages on a daily basis. And the, you're always competing, especially the sellers. Um, sellers are competing constantly to get the attention of the right audience. So the, the point, and this is kind of the reason that we're going over all this, is that if you can get a hold of um, the, the attention of your audience, you're going to be able to really capitalize on this visual age. So a couple key stats here. So as some of you may know, the number of Amazon subscribers has exceeded 200 million. And to give you a concept on this, three years ago, it was half that. So Amazon's been around for what, probably 18, 20 years or something like that. Something like that yeah. yeah. And the growth rate that we're seeing is that in the last three years, they've doubled in size. Also on top of that, um, so especially, you know, we're talking about pandemic year, era here. So a lot of us are spending more time at home, whether we like to or not. <laughs> and, um, you know, 68% of consumers say that the pandemic has influenced or increased or impacted the amount of video content that they're watching online. 94% uh, um, of people have watched some kind of an explainer video to know what whether to buy a product or not. 84% of people say that they've been convinced to buy a product or service by watching a brand's ad. So, and these, these numbers are not specifically on Amazon, obviously. 
This is on Amazon, on someone's website, social media, et cetera. So also the retention statistics, you'll see that 95% there. Basically, when someone sees an explainer video or some kind of video about a product, they're going to retain 95% of the information versus 10%. So it's a very large difference. Um, it's, just, it's just the times we're in. So 64% of consumers make purchases after watching branded social videos. So this other point here, we did also a, a little or a lot of study on the A10 version of Amazon's algorithm. So for, for anyone who kind of is tracking or understands what this is, fine. But for everyone else, the, the concept here is that Amazon is constantly evolving. So what they're trying to do is obviously improve the buying experience. Does that always have a positive effect on all sellers? No. But what it does have, because they're not they're not so much interested in how well um, it it you know feels for the seller, but what is the buying experience on the other end? So the the concept of this algorithm is to refine the process so that when someone comes onto Amazon and looks to buy some kind of product, ultimately and as easy as humanly possible, they start with their search and are very quickly on a product that is exactly what they're looking for. So over time, again, this algorithm has changed, varied. Um, at times it's had a lot more focus on PPC and how well um, someone ranks in terms of, you know, someone sees an ad, they convert to the page and then they actually buy the product. But more and more, especially with A10, what we're seeing is that it's more on more an organic focus. So there's a lot more focus on seller legitimacy and um, product relevance. So someone types in barbecue tongs. Does your listing equate to what they're thinking barbecue tongs are for them? Does Do you as a seller have a reputation that Amazon is going to feed people to your listing and you're actually going to convert over as a listing for that person? And then, oh, sorry, actually one other thing there. Another key point, go back to that last slide, is um, external traffic. Because the, especially with Amazon, like let's look at this. If we look at this always through the lens of what does Amazon want? Obviously they want to continue the expansion, continue taking over a majority market share when it comes to e-commerce. So if you have some means of driving external traffic, into Amazon, that obviously increases the possibility of Amazon increasing their market share. So they want you to take traffic from Facebook, Instagram, your Shopify store, wherever else, and send it into Amazon, send it into your listing. Even if it results in just you, you, you getting a purchase, the more purchases that someone newly makes on Amazon, the more likely that they're going to become a prime subscriber and start using Amazon on a regular basis. So A10 really, as an algorithm, has been designed to increase these couple points, product relevancy, seller legitimacy, and then drive external traffic to, uh, to the Amazon marketplace. In other words, how can you take advantage of this? Or how can you structure what you have going on to... Um, take better advantage of A10. A couple things here, obviously. It, it kind of starts on a fundamental point. And Mark, I remember we were talking about this on the <coughs> webinar we did two weeks ago, how it really doesn't matter how good your PPC is, how good your listings are, but if you have a product that is of low quality, your pro you're not going to be able to sustain long-term you know, good PPC or good organic rank. Absolutely. Yeah, on top of that, so fine. You start out with, you have to have a good product. Once you have a good product, you have to be able to convey that in your listing effectively. Um, that means bullets, photos, also video in your listing, yep. description, backend keywords, all of these points. Yeah. So once you have a good product, good listing, and then you ensure that those keywords are you know, really conveying what your product is, you're going to have relevancy. And those things, especially when talking through or looking through the lens of A10, ultimately increase your organic listing. Okay, so I think that's kind of uh, that in a nutshell, therefore, yep. Okay, next slide. So what are things that you can focus on? Obviously, your product, you want to focus on making sure that if you know, you're getting bad reviews, that's going to be something you need to change with your product. Improve your listing quality, 
in terms of the actual physical listing, but also the keywords that you're putting into your listing. After that, you're really looking at how can I drive external traffic into my listing? How can I include improve? Because still, that does, this doesn't mean that PPC is not important. It just means that in terms of your organic rank, Amazon is starting to look at those other factors. So you want to make sure your click-through rate and your conversion rate are as high as they can be. And that kind of, again, comes down to relevancy. So uh, a couple statistics here that I want to kind of have people thinking with. So the, the things that we just covered obviously are very Amazon centric, but we don't, we, we mentioned here, obviously external traffic. If you have external traffic, why don't you go where there are most eyeballs, which would be social media. So part of that 82% of Twitter users watch video content on Twitter. 90% of Twitter video views happen on a mobile device. Going over to Facebook, we're, we're seeing, good, okay. So Facebook Live viewers increased by 50% in spring of 2020. So COVID is definitely taken, if anyone, I, I'm sure all of you are thinking with this, COVID basically took what the expansion we were going to see over the next three years, four years, and compressed it into 2020. So Facebook Live views increased by 20%, 84% of marketers are using Facebook on their marketing channels. And you're kind of seeing this in kind of the broad strokes, 140 million um, daily uh, base. So Facebook uh, has a, a base of 140 uh, million users and they're watching 26 minutes of video every day. Instagram, Instagram actually from a statistics standpoint seems to be one of the biggest growers. 77% of uh, marketers are using IGTV, which is basically Instagram's uh, longer than one minute platform. Uh, so you can put video on there that's longer than one minute. Um, you're seeing three times more engagement by comments on video ads than you are on still image ads. So you, you have carousel ads on Instagram, you have single image ads, you have video ads. So the video ads are getting significantly higher amounts of engagement. Engagement on social media equates to brand awareness, equates to sales. All right, 25% of Instagram ads are single videos. Okay, and then you can see the percentage there. 79% of people say that video ad convinced them to buy something. And I, I'm sure I speak for anyone in this room. I've definitely done the same thing. So that is something I would personally agree with. Yep. Yeah. 58% of marketers plan to use video. 70% uh, of Instagram users watch video in the form of stories. So the we're, we're going to keep going through these stats here, but the point, and I'm sure you're starting to see this in social media, the amount of weight that um, the A10 iteration of Amazon's algorithm is placing on external traffic, you're seeing the metrics that tell you this is a visual age. So one in four consumers have made a purchase after seeing a story on Instagram. And, and it kind of, oh, okay, we've got questions in the chat. Now, um, why don't you review those, see if there's something that we wanna, here's what I'm planning on doing, unless there's something that we see um, would value every single person in here. What we'll probably do is save the, the questions for the end. Um, Mark, if you happen to see something that you think should be brought up now, just, just let me know. Yeah, sounds good. Otherwise, so you can look at it this way. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, right? So the, the way, the reason to look at this is that is twofold, okay? We did in addition to doing an analysis, a full marketing or advertising analysis on of all of our customers. We also, some of you probably participated in it. We did a seller survey and we also did a PPC survey. In that PPC survey, it was very clear that people are running into problems with PPC. And I'm sure most of you who are on this can relate to that in, in, in one way or another. And the bottom line is that previous quote from Einstein. If you continue doing those same actions and you don't change anything, you know, it's very hard to imagine that you're going to get different results. So that's kind of why when we, when we uh, talked about this in the, the webinar that we kicked off two weeks ago, the whole idea that we're, we're doing here is that we want to give you more strategies that you might not be taking advantage of to improve your performance on Amazon. Because you look at page one, right? between 50 and 58% of page one search results are paid. So there's no question that it's important to have your PPC game on, you know, very, very refined, right? On top of that, you see a lot of video ads, especially on mobile. 
Um, and this is kind of exactly that point. By survey, PPC and marketing are the largest concern and problems that most sellers have. And this makes sense because advertising costs, the more competitive Amazon gets, you know, the more refined Amazon's platform will be. And if you don't know all the fundamentals of PPC or a video, uh, a brand video ad, if you don't have those fundamentals really nailed down, what ends up happening is it feels like it's getting more expensive. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's getting more expensive, but you have to be at the top of the game to take best advantage of it. So the average person is spending approximately 50% of their gross revenue on Amazon PPC. So I'm sure everyone here would agree that anything you can do to bring down that advertising cost of total sales is going to be something that's advantageous to you. So that's kind of, this is, this is for some people, it might seem like a, an alarming number, but here's the way I want you to look at this. It's not that way as you, so as people get larger as a seller, so meaning as the gross revenue increases, the ACOTS or this figure, your total revenue compared to advertising goes down. It goes down dramatically as you improve your, you know, your gross revenue. Now you can look at that one of two ways. Oh, great. So all I need to do is increase my gross revenue and my PPC spend will go down. Something tells me it's the exact opposite of that. Yep. Yeah. It's as you improve your PPC game, as you take advantage of these strategies, you will improve your gross revenue. And the numbers were also very interesting. This could totally be a corollary, but this is why we reached out to Will and Devin and why we're giving you this information. The percentage of sellers as their revenue grows that are using sponsored brand video ads skyrockets. On average, the anyone who's selling between a thousand dollars, oh, I'm gonna shift that, yeah. Anyone who's selling a, between $1,000 a year, which is obviously nothing, and I think it's even up to 100000 a year, their usage of video ads is non-existent. And from 100000 a year up to a million a year, it, you start to see it start to creep up. And above a million a year, it's one for one. Every single one of them are utilizing the strategy. So we figured it stands to reason we might as well show you really what it's all about so we can do anything in our power to decrease the amount you're spending in relation to your revenue on PPC. So as we mentioned earlier, so Amazon uh, sponsored brand video ads, that is the main platform you have to really utilize video content on Amazon. Now, I'm pretty sure, let me see the next slide. So in terms of ACoS, um, basically compared to sponsored display, non-video sponsored brand, and then also sponsored product, sponsored video on average is 20%, has a 20% better ACoS. In other words, you're seeing more efficiency with sponsored video ads than any other ad type. And that um, stands to reason until you start getting very, very high in your gross revenue. And I think that's just, again, your refinement game. But at the lower levels, what ends up happening is not even lower levels, lower, middle, and middle high levels. What you're seeing is that video ads, once you get the video content up there, honestly, are more engaging with your audience. And, you know, we have all those video um, statistics in terms of watch rates and all those things from earlier. So that kind of gives you an idea. So again, now what I want to do is I'm going to kind of turn over some uh, turn over the slides to Will, and Will is going to walk through um, a lot of the marketing know-how and video creation techniques that they use in order to help what, you know, as I mentioned, a lot of Fortune 100 companies, um, you know, make over 6,000 professional videos. So, Will, uh, I'm going to turn over this section over to you. And um, yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll be right over here if you need me. Very good. And I'm actually going to share my screen if that's all right, because there were a couple of requests for that. So I'll just do the preview and that way you can, I think people can still see me talking maybe, which sometimes helps a little bit. Um, so can yeah. everybody see that? Yes, yeah, we can see you and we're, okay, we're screen sharing on our side. Okay, good, good. And I'm gonna try one thing. Um, if people, I will say while I'm chatting with you all, if you do have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, and Curtis, maybe you could say you've got a couple of questions, just feel free to interrupt at any Yeah, point. that's Yeah, that's what we'll definitely do. Because um, it may not show up on my screen fully, so. 
Um, good. So just very briefly, I started making online video around 2009. And to give context, MySpace was still the number one uh, social media platform at the time. Um, broadband internet was becoming widespread, but it wasn't nearly what it is now, obviously. Mobile internet wasn't anything at that point. So I kind of rode the first wave of online video and I learned a lot. And I co-founded an agency in 2008. I never graduated college. I was a musician. I had to deal with Warner Brothers and was toured around and did TV and radio and things. And so uh, when that was done, <laughs> I just looked horrible on paper. No one would ever have hired me for even an entry level job probably, but I had ambition and I had an ideas. And so I co-founded this agency and we started creating content for a lot of business to business clients. We were doing white papers and PDFs and doing uh, social media profiles and things like that. And we were trying to figure out a way to communicate with this to, to attract the attention of the audience that we were going after for our clients very quickly, grab their attention, keep their attention, and then explain what were often kind of complex value propositions quickly and simply and succinctly. And so we started making these very simple videos using iMovie, literally at the time, um, using uh, stock photography, text on screen, but we were very thoughtful about the way that we wrote the scripts. The voiceovers were very personable. They were very conversational. At the time, a lot of video just sounded like old school ads, like welcome to blah, blah, blah. And it just kind of took you out of it right away. But we took this very conversational approach and it worked like crazy. Like, like we went fishing and fish were jumping into the boat. And so it kind of exploded our business. I stopped everything else I was doing and we sort of started a video business within our business, which became my full-time job. And this many years later, I've produced over 6,000 videos for dozens of industries and verticals and things like that. So the reason I'm sort of giving this history is that I went into this area knowing this much about how to make a video, just nothing. I had never done it before. And we worked it out over time. And, and the good news is when you have thousands of uh, projects, you get really good at it really fast. And you also do everything wrong that could possibly be done at least 20 times. So there's a lot of uh, just hard won experience and wisdom that comes from that, which I'm very proud of. And, that, and so now we bring that, of course, to every project that we do. So as you start looking at video, I think, I hope we've made a very compelling case here. The numbers are pretty crazy. And if you just think about it yourself logically, if you go to an Amazon page, you go to a listing, you want to learn more about the product. Would you rather read, you know, a half a page of text in small type, you're looking at photos, but if you watch a video in 45, 60 seconds, you can really get a sense of exactly what it is, how it might be used. You get a sense of the company, of the quality of the product, of the quality of the presentation, all that factors in. So video, I mean, I, I've clearly drunk the Kool-Aid on this for years already, but I'm a huge believer in the value of video and, and how much it works, how much it actually helps communicate. So if you've got something that you're trying to explain to somebody, you could talk to them about it for 20 minutes or you can show them a really well-made 45 second video and you'll accomplish even more in that 45 seconds than you would if you were just talking to them for 20 minutes. So, um, so we're gonna go over right now just some really basic fundamental concepts related to what makes a good video. Obviously there's so many opinions about how you might go about it. Do you want it to be more live action, more animated, inside, outside, gorgeous and beautiful shots or kind of lo-fi on purpose, right? More selfie style. Um, there, there's pros and cons to every approach, but these fundamentals that we're gonna go over here very briefly here are designed to work no matter what you're selling, no matter who your audience is. They have worked for us for thousands of projects for over a thousand clients from the Fortune 100 household name companies to mom and pop shops and startups and nonprofits these fundamental principles work for everybody. So the first vitally important element that you want to keep in mind is you want to obsessively and continually put yourself in the shoes of your audience. So if you're very similar to your audience, like if you're 35 years old and you have young kids at home and you're selling a product that is for parents in their 30s with young kids, it's very easy to do that. 
if you're selling to folks in another country who speak another language who are 40 years older or younger than you are or something, then you have to work a little bit harder to understand what their challenges might be. But the first vital key ingredient is really think about your audience and what they might want to hear. So we say to our clients all the time, it's not about you. It's not about how great your product or service is. It's about your customer. Obsessively make it all about them, their needs. They need to watch this thing and nod their head and saying, I totally need that. Or I didn't think I need that. Or God, I really don't have the money, but I really want that thing now because it's so great. They've done such a good job selling me. That's the effect that you're trying to create, right? In a very brief period of time. So if you find yourself kind of going off in different directions or you don't know where to start, just ask yourself, if I were this person, my ideal customer, and, and with all the analytics and metrics you guys have now, it's pretty easy to uh, figure out who those people are. Put yourself in their shoes, look at it from their viewpoint. What would you want to see in 45 seconds that would convince you to say, okay, this is the product for me. So knowing your audience, understanding their needs and building the entire ad completely from their point of view is what you want to focus on more than anything else. So once you understand your audience, what you want to ask yourself is what, what problem am I, is this product in particular solving for my ideal customer? So the problem might be very specific, like I don't have a stapler and I need a great stapler, right? It could also be, I don't have enough pretty things in my house and I want a pretty thing because I deserve it, right? So problem is sort of a relative concept, but the people are coming to your page because there is something in their life that they are missing, whether it's just a trinket that's beautiful for fun or it's something vitally important to their business. Whatever it is you are solving, this your product in particular is solving a very specific problem or set of problems for this audience. So the next thing when you're trying to figure out what you want to communicate is, okay, I know who I'm talking to. Now, what problem am, am I solving? What problem or problems am I solving? And if, if there's a hundred things you could say about this product, pick the, the one or two or three things that you think are most important, most vital. So there's sort of things that are nice to have, and then there are things that are really mission critical to communicate. So if you're thinking about the, the relative importance of the problems that you're solving, what's the, the, the top one, two or three things that your product is going to solve for them? That's the next question you want to answer. So once you've laid this all out, you know who you're talking to, you know what problems you're solving. Now you need to convince them that your product is going to solve their problem better than everybody else. And here's where research comes in really handy. I'm sure you've probably already done a lot of this related to your listing overall and how you're communicating the value of your product. But go again to every competitor you can find. And a lot of them probably have video because video is becoming more and more popular. If they don't, make even a decent, halfway decent video and you will already be light years ahead of where they are. But assuming a fair number of your competitors have video, watch all of them. Take notes, be ruthless. If this is the fun part, be as critical as you want to be. That doesn't make sense. That looks stupid. That's too complicated. What the heck are they even talking about? You can make uh, your, your checklist of things that you liked and didn't like. You're also going to see things that are almost intimidating, like, God, that looks really good. Or man, I don't know if I can do that. It's totally fine. You want to, you want to note the stuff that, that makes you want to buy the product. And again, don't get fooled by, Oh God, this looks like they spent 20 grand on it. Don't worry about that. Keep asking yourself, if, if I were my ideal customer and I watched this video, would I be clicking on buy now by the end of it? Am I convinced of the value? Am I convinced that it's going to solve my problem better than anything else? So do whatever research you need to do, really be objective about your own product as well, right? Is this the best out of all the competition that's out there or is frankly somebody else's product is just nicer and better than mine but maybe yours solves a particular niche maybe it, it's just a better value right like the nicest product in that in that bracket is five times more expensive so you're not trying to compete with that right you're selling the value of this is a really quality product for a fifth of the price that you would pay for whatever the competition is offering right so find that angle of approach and figure out what it is about your product that solves their problem better than your competitors. And you want to really feature that in your video. 
So the other element that I find really interesting about doing things like Amazon shopping, if you own a shop in, in a brick and mortar shop in your neighborhood, people come in, they get to know you, you, you start having repeat customers, you, you learn their names, right? Like, especially if you're in a small town in a community, you really get to know people and you have a reputation around town even, right? If you're the local general store or what have you. With online shopping, it's, it's much trickier, right? It's a much more anonymous experience almost all the time. So anything you can do with your video that injects the human element into it, and it can be very subtle. You don't have to be hard sell about it. You don't have to spend half the video talking about it, but anything that you can do to inject some humanity into it, like, hi, we're real people. We really care. Your, your business really matters to us. Even text on screen, just saying that, we really appreciate your business and appreciate you as a customer. I bought several things online, not necessarily through Amazon, but just through private online ads, Facebook ads, whatever. I bought some things direct from private sellers that I wouldn't have heard of if they hadn't been advertising online. And a few times I've gotten it and it's been, you know, in a beat up padded envelope, you know, it's like, here you go, here's your thing, right? And it's like, okay, thank you. And then sometimes I've gotten things in really nice packaging and literally I, a couple of times I got handwritten notes like saying, thank you so much for being a customer. We really value your input. We'd love to hear from you. Here's our website, here's our social. And I didn't, I didn't respond. I didn't go sign up for their mailing list, but I remember, I can tell you the, the brand. Uh, I, I remember who did that. And I definitely don't remember who didn't do that because I don't even remember the brand, right? So anything that you can be doing in your video and with your listing in general, within what Amazon allows you to do, what they allow you to say and promise to people, whatever you can do to remind people that I've got five choices and the products are virtually identical. Who do I wanna give my money to? I'm gonna give my money to people that made me feel like there was a, another human being on the other end of the line, that if I had a problem or needed to do a return or whatever, that somebody's gonna take great care of me. So the question to ask is why should someone be doing business with you as opposed to all the competition? You know, in the real world, it's pretty rare that you're trying to buy a pair of shoes and 10 shoe stores are all on the same block and you go from shoe store to shoe store to shoe store, right? But the nature of Amazon is you're just one click away, even on your listing, right? All your competition is down at the bottom, like, come on. So, so what is it that you're going to do to convince people to buy from you as opposed to the competition? Anything you can inject that will add that little personal touch, it can, can be very effective, very helpful. Curtis, how am I doing so far? You are doing very well. <laughs> I need a lot of validation, guys. It's very important. Yeah, no, and, and it's true because a lot of, a lot of these points, um, you know, we've all experienced ourselves with Amazon and off Amazon. So, um, I'm excited for you to get a couple further points in because I, I know what some of these things are containing. So I'm, I'm going to shut up and I'm going to let you talk. <laughs> okay, no worries. Um, so uh, I'm just looking very quickly um, just at a couple of questions. So someone asked, is the type of video content super important? Uh, no, no. The, the, the senior stuff that I'm going through uh, in our experience is much more important than the visual format. I'm gonna talk right now about quality. So I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and then someone's saying, when you have a lot of products, it doesn't seem to be affordable to have a video ad for each product we carry. Once you get good at making video, so, so I agree that if you have tons of different products, it might be very challenging budget-wise to do a high-end, you know, full production video. You could do that potentially on your, your biggest money makers, your biggest sellers. Once you start to understand the fundamental principles about how to make a great video, you can end up doing them much more inexpensively. So you go, I go back to the example when I first started my last agency and we were doing videos in iMovie. You could go onto YouTube and watch how to make a video in, in iMovie. And it's a lot to begin with. I, I, won't, I won't lie that, that if you're gonna learn all of this from scratch all by yourself, you know, it's going to take a little bit of doing, but it's not insurmountable by any means. And if you, if you potentially work with an agency on the first video, let's say in your series, and you start to understand the process, it's not super complex to reverse engineer it once you've been through it once or twice. You know, well, there's one other thing that I, I kind of want to say on that. Um, you also have to look at this from the perspective of a business investment, because 
yeah, start off with one video. Start off, like Will is saying, start off with your, you know, best performing product so you can increase sales in that one area, right? But if you see that the cost versus the return makes sense, because you should always, you should always test it as a business owner. You should test it, make sure that it is going to respond the way, you know, we're telling you it's going to respond. But once it works, and Mark, chime in on this one because you have firsthand experience on this, but yeah. once you see that it works, there's it's it there's a point that you also need to look at like <clears throat> if your product or your category or product uh doesn't have currently a lot of video ads on it like if you go and search uh the the amazon uh sale or uh, buying page and you don't see that there's a lot of competitors doing videos already that's you could literally go and take your iphone do a video do a voiceover do some background music whatever it is get super simple do it on fiverr cost you 25 bucks to make the whole thing uh, get that up and you'll see dramatic increase in sales. Um, if you see, okay, you have a lot of competitors that are doing high quality video. Okay. Yeah. You're going to need to be on par with them in order to actually compete with their videos. But if you see a, a category where it's, it's open up and you kind of go, Oh, no one's really doing, or there's only one or two competitors that are doing videos, add in your video, get a video up, uh, you know, as soon as possible. And then, yeah, work on getting a nice video created and, and, and launched in there. Yeah. And we're going to cover one thing closer to the end that will kind of cap off sort of some of what he's saying. But um, again, I want to, I want to give Will a chance to cover some of these points. So again, I'll no worries. And Valerie clarified, I miss, I misunderstood her question. I, I think your answer actually sort of answered it in a way. Oh, and I know you guys are going to go more into that anyway. So, yeah. so I'll, I'll, I'll keep trucking here. Um, so let's talk about quality of presentation. Um, so I can't, I can't easily move the camera that I'm working with right now, but it's a $3,000 camera. I've got two soft lights here um, and you can sort of see the blurred background behind me. Um, and so this isn't like I threw this together, right? This isn't God's gift to video presentation, right? Um, but it, it looks decent. You can see me clearly, it's framed well. We've, I've sort of like included some fundamentals here, right? Um, and this is, over a decade, thousands of projects and a few thousand dollars a year to look like this as opposed to just a standard uh, presentation like, like with my MacBook camera, right? You, depending on the quality of your product itself, uh, it's, it will matter to some degree. You know, if you're, if you're trying to sell a Rolls Royce, you're not gonna do the commercial with an iPhone. You're just not. Right. Even even if even if you're partnering with Apple on the Apple edition Rolls Royce, uh, maybe then possibly. You're but still using still professional Martin, sound and lighting. Yeah, they're still going to get Martin <laughs> Scorsese to be holding the iPhone. You know what I mean? Um, and the sound design and everything else is going to be incredible. Um, so it, it's challenging in the sense of uh, you're always going to want it, you're always going to want it to be better. If you're doing it on your own, especially when you first start out, you're going to work your butt off and you're going to see the end product and you're going to want it to be better. And that's just the nature of uh, the beast, the nature of doing it. Um, if you can, if you've got the budget to work with experienced professionals, you're going to, you're going to be happy that you did. As long as you vet them properly, and we can even, if we have time, I can even, or maybe the Q&A at the end, I can talk to you about what to look for in an agency. Mm -hmm. Happy to do that. If, if they're pro and they know what they're doing, you're going to be very, very happy at the end of it, especially if you keep some of these fundamental principles in mind about the story that you're telling. The higher the production value, the, the higher the perceived value of your product, period. That's just the truth of it. That does, that's not to say that if the value proposition is very strong, that you can't do things because we all see them all the time. There's all the Facebook videos and things of all these like uh, um, influencers and the guy with the six pack who's chugging the shake. And, you know, it's like all that stuff. I'm like, hey guys, you know, it's, it's influencer marketing, right? That's kind of its own thing. I'm not saying that that can't work for a product, but they don't care about you, right? They, they don't care about your, how you look on camera or anything like that. They, they want information about this product, right? They're there to shop. They want to be, they want to know what the product is, how it's going to work for them. Again, what problems it's solving for them, et cetera. So don't let 
budget concerns or quality concerns prevent you from starting to create video? Because in my experience, a decently done video, if you keep these most of these fundamental principles in mind, a decently shot video is still worth way more than not having video at all. I think that that's that's very clear. Just just statistically speaking, uh, you're going to be better off with a, with an even decent video. If you can work with an agency and you work with pros, uh, then then you really I would I highly recommend that. Again, I'm biased, right? But but in our experience, you, you're, if you work with the right people, they're going to get an amazing product. So um, uh, just another quick question here. What's more important, a how-to video posted in the listing or a brand product video that comes up in Amazon search page? Um, I'm going to let you all uh, probably, can you note that down, Curtis? And you guys yeah. can talk about that a little bit at the end. Yeah, definitely. Because, and uh, the ideal answer is that it's not either or, right? Like, like if you only had budget, maybe you make one a higher budget than the other, but both are super helpful, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I, that's important to just note that this is not a one and done situation. So when I first started making video, I literally, I was riding this wave, which was like turbulent, like, oh my God, we had more business than we knew what to do with. And just wondering how long this is gonna last, thinking, okay, everybody's gonna get one explainer video for their homepage and they're done, right? And this is my stupid thinking at the time. If you go on YouTube and you search for like Fortune 100 companies like Shell, they make thousands of videos. Like just their nonstop video making machines, which is great for us. We love working with them. Um, and, and we're one of easily a hundred agencies that they work with right around the world. So you want to, the idea here is that you want to incorporate video in what you do because video is the future. It's the present and it's, there's no doubt that it's the yeah. future. So whatever you take away from today, start figuring out video for yourself, right? Whatever that means for you, for your business, just get going on it. Start getting oriented to it, seeing what works, what doesn't, what you like, what you don't like, uh, because it's here to stay. And it's you definitely want to you want to ride this this way in terms of the way that video ads are performing right now. You, you don't want to miss the boat on that. And again, I'm not plugging our services in particular at all. That's not what I mean. Uh, I mean that you want to figure out what video means for your business and how how to incorporate it. Please do that. You know, whether you decide to work with us or somebody else or do it all on your own, uh, I think it's very, very important that you, that you do that. Okay, um, moving on. Uh, just a very quick note uh, that you can get yourself into a whole lot of trouble, which I did one time. Um, I had a contractor make a video, uh, sorry, a website. This is way back in the day over 10 years ago at my last agency. We did a video for an Indian restaurant in Santa Monica, California. I think the guy paid us like maybe a thousand bucks for the whole thing. And it was very like a brochure, simple site. And the contractor that I used, used a stock photo that he did not license properly. I did not know this. I didn't think to ask because I didn't think he was a moron, which apparently he was. And so a year goes by and I get an email from Getty Images saying, you owe us it was like $3,000 or something, something like not cool. Some not cool amount of money, which I did not have at the time because we had used this one stock image without the proper license. And it was a subcontract. They did not care at all. It was like jury duty. They're like, nobody cares, buddy, show up. So we ended up eating that bill and I've never made that mistake again. So when you go to find imagery, what you cannot, absolutely cannot do is do a Google image search and start dragging things into iMovie, right? So um, you just need to basic understanding and orientation. You wanna go to reputable sites, iStock photo, iStock video, Shutterstock, things like that. If you just, you can Google search any number of terms. So a uh, good stock photography website, things like that. Same thing with music, stock music website. Uh, one of my favorites is called premiumbeat.com. I'm sure we can include that. It's just like it sounds, B-E-A-T, premiumbeat.com. Uh, artlist.io is another great one. Um, and that's like an all-inclusive. If you're going to do a bunch of these, then that's kind of a subscription, and, and that's a great way to do it. Um, so we subscribe to that. Yeah, that's so what we you use. just want to make sure that your, your legal house is in order in terms of what you are shown, because you can get yourself up the creek on that, and I don't want that to happen to anybody. So as you're building these, just make sure that the raw material you're using creatively um, is, is properly licensed and paid for. And all these major websites make it very easy to understand 
I'm using this for online. I'm using this for a TV commercial. Um, just make sure you get the appropriate license for it. As you go. Um, good. Oh, I see. It's just I'm just making sure I'm I'm catching these uh, questions. So uh, an optimal length of the video, we're we're talking about 45 second videos, and we're also doing um, 15 second cut downs frequently. Um, the shorter, the better is the true answer. But if you go too much shorter than 45 seconds, you, it starts getting challenging to, to squeeze in the whole value proposition. So 45 seconds, we found to be really good. Anybody nowadays will sit through 45 seconds if they're interested in the product. You start going much longer than that and, and they'll, their interest will start waning. Essentially. Uh, well, one of, the, one of the questions was just if you could repeat the names of some, I guess, sites you would recommend. Oh, yes. <laughs> you mean you didn't have a pen ready immediately? <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, so pre premiumbeat.com for music, artlist.io for music. Um, in terms of imagery, like stock imagery, um, istockphoto.com, istockvideo.com. That is Getty Images, like the Getty Museum, right? They're the 400 pound gorilla in, in the stock imagery and stock video space. Um, they tend to be a little bit more expensive than some other ones, like Shutterstock is another good one. But iStock is, uh, that's Getty, and, and they are they just have beautiful stuff. So it, in my experience, it's worth paying a little bit more to get something that looks great, you know, as opposed to something like screaming, like checking my watch in my business meeting where it's just screaming stock photo, you know, you want to yep. shoot yourself. So good. Um, so there was a question about voiceover narration. Uh, a well-done voiceover is absolutely very helpful. What we've seen more, uh, and, and virtually all of our videos for Amazon, and we're doing OTT commercials like for IMDB networks. So we're actually working with Amazon corporate and we're basically making TV commercials for the digital streaming age. So if Netflix had TV commercials, we'd be doing it for that. In this case, it's IMDB network owned by Amazon. So there, we're doing essentially TV commercials for them. For that, we do voiceovers almost exclusively. Um, for ads on pages, I've seen it both ways. Um, I recommend having the key text points on screen no matter what. So the key value proposition points that you wanna make sure you include, like it slices, it dices, it cuts cans, right? That's the stuff that you wanna see on screen for sure. Um, so voiceovers really, uh, it's up to you. We have our own in-house artists that we use and kind of a network of people that we use obviously for our videos. But if you go to voices.com, you can find very talented people. You can post an ad there um, and you get responses. Uh, it's incredible. You, you can get a hundred responses right away depending on how much you're willing to pay. Um, so, uh, and one, one other plug I'll give, if, if at any point in this presentation, you're like curled up in the fetal position, just know that this is what agencies do. That it's kind of the point, right? It's like, if you have the time and effort and energy, you can figure out anything. You know, you could be a brain surgeon if you're patient enough, right? And just go to medical school for eight years, right? Um, so if you're a capable, competent person, which is an entrepreneur, you clearly are, and my hat is off to you because I know how hard it is. Um, again, not plugging us in particular, but just if you work with smart, capable people, this is what they do for a living all day, every day. So you don't, you don't have to learn it all if you don't want to. But if you find it interesting and compelling and it's fun, and I hope it is, um, it's worth learning because it's really neat. And then, you know, it's like when, once you know how to fish, you'll feed yourself forever, right? Is the concept. So. Um, good. All right. Moving on. And um, Curtis, just tell me when I'm, it's like, shut up, man. Stop talking, please. Uh, like, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let our people like the audience tell us that if they start texting and <laughs> saying, shut up. Start, <laughs> if you start doing that symbol a lot, then I'll know to, to cut Yeah, off. right. Um, um, no, I, I'm pretty sure you're you're doing absolutely great. So Okay, no worries. On. I just want to make sure I don't have to say my welcome. And I could obviously talk about this forever because I love it so much. Yeah, so, yeah, I understand. We love helping people for what it's worth. It's, it's really fun to take big ideas or complex ideas or a great product and really communicate it for that ideal audience, right? Every video has a, as an ideal customer for that video. It's really fun to figure out who are these people? What do they care about? What do they value? And then being able to take something that's kind of complex or complicated and, and reducing it down to this 30 or 45 second or 60 second pitch that just nails it. And it makes you excited too, right? It makes you more excited to post your ads and, and to, to share it with the world because you've done such a great job articulating the value, you know? So anyway. 
It's fun to do that. Next point, uh, keep staying within Amazon's creative guidelines. Amazon has very strict guidelines, as it turns out, what you can and can't say. Again, any agency that's done this will be able to uh, tell you what those are as you go. So as you're, as you're going through the creative process, what is and isn't allowed. Obviously, you can find that information for yourself. And it's not crazy complicated, but you kind of do have to check off the list. And you've got to be willing to submit something and have them say, eh, nope, you got to fix this and this and this and this. And it can be a little tedious, especially if you do something you think is super cool and then for whatever reason it just doesn't fit within their guidelines and you have to reduce the cool factor it's a bit like creating yep. a, a a car uh, a concept car and then have it actually build it in the real world right uh, they may they may make it not look as cool at the end of it but um again any, any agency you work with uh, is going to know what those guidelines are they change them also periodically um so it's good it's important to keep up on that uh, they'll let you know. They're not going to let you post it if, if it's violating their guidelines. So, um, but any anybody that you work with professionally should know that. So, um, the and we're almost done, by the way, with my section. In case anybody's wondering how many more drops of wisdom I'm going to uh, drop on you here. Um, call to action. Don't assume that because you've made this great pitch that someone's just going to click on buy now. It's okay to say within Amazon's guidelines, and again, they're very clear about that, what you can and can't say, encourage people. And it can be as subtle as, uh, you know, depending on what, what the product is and what it's used for, um, uh, you know, buy now, buy now on Amazon. If you're, if you're gonna use this also on platform and off platform, um, one thing that we did for um, several of our ads, we created this animation at the end of it. And these are for the TV commercials that we were doing where at the end of it, because we were trying to drive traffic specifically to their Amazon listing, we showed an animated search bar with the exact term that people should be searching to make their exact product come up. So they're like, we did, uh, we did a commercial for yak chews for dogs. I was like, what? And this guy was so cool. He has this business, like he, he had all these different Amazon businesses and he just hit pay dirt with yak chews that he, he, he brings in an entire shipping container through China from Nepal once a month and sells an entire shipping container of yak chews to Americans for their dogs. Who knew? So we did this fun live TV commercial with dogs and it was, it was just super fun to, to create it. Um, and at the end of it, it was like, I think they were EcoKind was the name of the brand. So we did EcoKind Golden Yak Chews or something, whatever the exact name was. And that as an Amazon seller, that's what you want. You know, you want, it's like, you want to bring them to your page and say, here you go. So if you're going to create something, you're going to spend money on it um, and you're going to use it on platform, off platform, et cetera. Just be thinking about that. Like, like don't, people can love what they see, but if you don't make it incredibly easy for them to go click the button, then they're not going to do that. And just reminding them to go ahead and click the button. People are, it's okay to suggest that to people. So whether it's right on the page and that's the only place it's ever gonna be, by now, uh, you know, there, again, there's a particular language that Amazon allows and doesn't allow, but within push the limits of what they will let you say and basically encourage people like, go ahead and click, please. You're, gonna, you're not gonna be sorry, you're gonna love this. It's gonna be great. Um, so whatever you can do to encourage them to actually do that is, is very important. Uh, we have a, a couple question questions. About yeah, from Jeff. Yeah, so there's on, vertical uh, versus horizontal. Yep. Um, yes. So typically, if we know ahead of time uh, that we're doing both, then we can arrange it in such a way uh, that you can do horizontal and vertical. We don't do as much Instagram content, um, mainly because a lot of our historical, like our, our big, like the Fortune 100 clients that are our bread and butter, um, most of it is business to business. So Instagram is not such a big thing for them, but we have done Instagram edits, absolutely. So we did one for like ADM, Archer Daniels, Midland, a big agro, agribusiness um, company, and they did a whole Instagram launch. So, so we, we did a whole series of videos for them in normal format and then did the rest. Um, and we, we modified every one or two to do that. So, um, uh, Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Trevor's saying I had a video rejected because Amazon said they needed proper grammar on the on-screen text. Yeah, man, <laughs> it's like it is a little bit like middle school again. And believe me, like we we spend a lot of time and energy creating things that we're very proud of, and, and to get your wrist slapped over stuff, you're like, 
Oh my God. Okay. So it can definitely take a moment. Um, the more you do it, the more experience you have with it, of course, you start to understand, you're able to predict better. So it's, it's easier to do that. Well, let me, I wanted to interject one thing on this because I, I mentioned something earlier and it kind of ties into what you just said or what Trevor asked. Here's from a creative standpoint, because yes, Will has only about a hundred thousand times the experience I have, but I've done a lot of marketing on a, on a general sense. And one thing that I think everyone should think with, and it's unfortunate and I, and I doubt it. It's funny. Cause I know that the average Amazon seller, I think it's like 50 or 60% have either a bachelor's or a master's degree, which is unbelievable, which is so cool. But the point is most of your audience doesn't statistically speaking from the forties and fifties to now the literacy rate and what passes as a literacy rate out there is plummeting. And I'm not saying this as any kind of political commentary, but look at it from a marketing standpoint, that means that the more written content you have, the harder it's going to be for someone to really understand it and understand your message. And that's not, not that there aren't other reasons why video is extremely popular and becoming more and more, but that is a major factor guys. It, people don't like to read and that's just the way. Can't get them to read anything. Yeah. yeah, literally, you can't get them to read anything, and you kind of gotta, you know, give them what they want. And that's really also why video is so important, is because we literally have a literacy problem in this planet, on this planet. So, kind of like an aside that sort of ties everything together. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and uh, in in terms of text on screen, obviously, tell me my internet is not behaving. Is it all right? It looks fine so far. You you froze for one second in a very ridiculous pose, but it was only for one second. <laughs> yes, it's always a ridiculous pose. That has to, it's required. Um, so yeah, there was a question about uh, sorry, text on screen. Think bullet points right, for your video. So very simple, uh, short and simple, and and short and sweet. What you want on screen for text in general. Um, can a talking testimonial work as a video ad? Yes. Uh, if you have a genuine testimonial uh, and it's legitimate, it comes across as legitimate, it doesn't look like you're, you, you can just explain the product as well. In my experience, um, again, making that look and sound good. Um, I don't know that you talking about how great your product is you shot on an iPhone in your bedroom is probably not a good idea. And I don't mean that, I'm not trying to sound flip. I, I mean, that's literally probably not a very good idea. But if you've got someone giving a third party endorsement where they like they do testimonials and they're good at it and it's kind of that format, you can absolutely make that work. So good for thought on that. Um, okay, we're almost there on my end. Um, so with everything that you're communicating, um, think about I'm a, I'm a sincere guy by nature. I'm like a boy scout about things. I love to help people. I love helping people communicate. If you make your video as helpful as you possibly can for your ideal customer, they're going to appreciate it. And it may, you may help people decide not to buy your product. That's going to save you on returns. That's going to save you on, on mediocre or bad reviews. You want to make sure that the product you're selling by the end of watching that video, if a person needs and wants your product, they're going to buy yours as opposed to anybody else's. If they think it's one thing and it's something else, they're not going to buy it, right? And you're going to save them. You're going to save yourself that headache, save them that headache. So just be as helpful as you can with what you're communicating. It comes back to the very first thing I said. Know your audience. Know what they care about. And just make the video for them. Make the video that you would want to see if you were them. Regardless of format, regardless of the production value, just communicate something that's going to re really explain the value of the product for them in a way that has them nodding their head saying, okay, cool. I like that. I either want it. Oh my God, I love it. I want it right now. Or that's not exactly what I had in mind. But if you focus on being helpful to them, as opposed to hitting them over the head with like a used car commercial vibe, um, they're going to really appreciate that. And that's what people are expecting now. And I wish I had brought it. It's downstairs. I wish I had brought it with me. But the example the I gave is I bought a wallet <laughs> one time. And it was a chain wallet. I ride motorcycles and I'm obsessed with motorcycles. And I wanted this cool looking chain wallet. I did all this research. And I got one that I thought looked great. The reviews are fantastic. And I order it and it's the size of a freaking business envelope. 
Like I've never used it once. It's still in my closet. I just have to take it to Goodwill. I never returned it because it was too much trouble and it wasn't that expensive to begin with. And it looks great, but who would ride on a motor? Like, why would you have a chain wallet that's this size? You know, it's the size, like, I don't know what people are doing with this thing. I've never seen anything like that in my life. So, uh, and, and it didn't have a video on the page and it never showed it in someone's hand. It just showed the wallet. It showed it closed, it showed it open. I looked at the photos, said, that's beautiful. And if they had had a video saying, look how cool this wallet is, and I'd seen that it was the size of a clown shoe, then I wouldn't have ordered. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an example where a video would have become in, um, super duper helpful. Yeah. So again, focus on being helpful, focus on being sincere, be great to your ideal customer and they will be great back to you as a follow-up. Um, let me see what else. Good, so this is my last thing. So Curtis, do I have another five minutes? Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. And I think you and I will probably tag team on this next section. Okay, okay, cool. Um, so <laughs> I've talked about this a lot and, and I've done uh, recent other video things and it occurred to me that I'm talking all, everything I've said so far has been a little bit abstract, right? These are like guiding principles about what makes a good ad. But now you're like, what do I do? Like you get off this thing, you're excited, like this is going to be great. And then you're like, I have no idea what the first step is, right? So let me just talk about very basic meat and potatoes production sequence about how you make a video, right? So the first thing you do is you start with a script, whether it's a voiceover that a voiceover voiceover artist is going to record and speak over the video, whether it's literally just a few bullet points on screen with beautiful visuals. And for instance, if you really are on a budget and you only have the iPhone and you're trying to make it look great, then lighting, get decent lighting, just learning really basic lighting techniques, things like that. And then a voiceover or bullet point text on screen might totally be the way to go, right? Um, so simple is fine. But no matter what it is, you start with what exactly you want to communicate, whether it's a voiceover artist saying it over the, over the visuals, or it's just bullet point text on screen, you want to make sure that you're telling the story. And again, that goes back to what problem are you solving? Why, how are you solving it better than the competition? Why should they buy from you versus somebody else? All that comes down to what you're actually going to say. Uh, so once you have a script and you're going to need to work out the timing, we have found if it's a voiceover, it's about 70 words per 30 seconds. So if you were doing a 45 second ad, you might do 100, what that'd be 110 words maybe. Yeah, 105. Um, uh, and there, there's, it, it varies. Like if it's, if it's a super technical product with lots of big words and you need to speak a little bit more slowly, that's one thing. If it's super conversational, look at the pretty thing, then obviously you can get away with uh, saying more and more quickly, right? So um, once you have a script, then you basically, now you have to decide how you want to visually present it. And there's a million different things you can learn about basic lighting techniques, camera techniques. Um, just sort of a general rule is that less is more. You want to, obviously the product needs to be the hero of your shot. And if you look at what the competition is doing, that'll give you some ideas. Look at stuff you like. You'll start to notice. You'll watch ads on TV. Why does that look so good? What is so good about this? What do I like about this? What do I not like about this? In general, get everything out of frame that could possibly be a distraction in any way. Uh, so if you're, if you're just shooting something from a slight angle, looking down on a table, make sure there's nothing else on the table. Make sure you can't see a power cord on the bottom corner, even if it's out of focus behind the scenes. You don't see stuff sitting on the counter in the corner behind or whatever clean, just think super duper clean visuals, whatever it is that you're showing. If you're using stock imagery, things like that, you don't want to pick this style of stock imagery that looks like this and, and is this kind of lighting effect and looks, this looks like a, like a horror movie and this looks like Mary Poppins or something. You, you don't want to, you don't want to blend crazy different visual things together, right? You don't want it to be visually jarring and you don't want your stock footage to distract from your product either, right? So you don't want to have, <laughs> you don't want to have like an iPhone shot with terrible lighting in your, on your kitchen counter. And then some gorgeous stock video of like people at a party laughing, like this is amazing. And you know, you don't, you don't want your, you don't want the hero shot of your product being the worst looking thing visually, right? In the video. So you have to kind of be mindful of things like that. Um, you could spend 
30 minutes of your life looking at YouTube tutorials on, on lighting and things like that. None of it is insanely complicated. A lot of it is just practice, 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 practice. And again, you have to decide just for your own sake, this is something I'm committed to. I'm going to learn this. I'm going to be amazing at it. And it's going to be a vital pillar of my business. That's one thing. Or no, nope, I really want to work with people who are amazing and do this all. And that they've done it a thousand times already. Um, and you just kind of have to make that decision for yourself. But the visual presentation can be any number of things, as long as it very clearly shows your product. Again, if your wallet is this big, please put your hand next to it. Um, so give it some context. And that's true if your product is being used in a certain life situation, you wanna see it in that life situation. So like a shower head would be another example. You're selling shower heads and you can give the, the dimensions of it on your listing. And that's like, okay, I get it. But if you can show it in a very clean, well-lit, bright bathroom and they see how the water's coming out of it, you'd be amazed what a difference that makes. Because you can say it's a rain shower head, but what does it really look like? Is it really gentle rain or is it like gushing out of there like a fire hydrant, right? And that might absolutely be the difference between someone buying it or not, because they're just not sure. And maybe your competitor does have a really good looking video that does show and it's like, ah, oh, yes beautiful rain falling from, from the sky, right? And, they, and so they go with your competitor instead of you, just for that one reason alone. So try to use it, try to show it in context, try to show how useful it is or how beautiful it is. But, and relative size, I keep harping on this, but it's, it's quite important when someone can't pick up something off the shelf and see, like I get the dimensions, what it's telling me, but how big is that in real life? Can I hold it? Is it this big? Will it fit? on my shelf where I really want to place it, where I have this thing, this space set aside for my new doodad and it's got to fit within these dimensions, right? Is it going to look right? You want to give people a, a subjective reality on your product the way you have it when you're sitting there holding it in your hand or, or standing next to it or whatever, right? Um, so once you've got the, the visuals put together, you know what story you're telling, whether it's with voiceover or some simple text on screen, you want to add music to it. Uh, you don't absolutely have to, but you should. Music make it, makes everything better. Again, I'm biased because I'm a musician, but you set the emotional tone. It can be hopeful. It can be aspirational. It can be super exciting. It can be fun. It can be beautiful and melodic and calming, right? So music really creates an emotional experience for people that will help forge an emotional connection with your product that has their finger going up like this to the buy now button, right? Because they're just like, I'm in, I love this. The right track can do that very quickly and just help in ways that the audience isn't even aware of that it's really happening that way, but it absolutely makes a difference. Conversely, the wrong music track will destroy your sales. So please don't do that. Like if you ever, and I swear, like, I don't know how this works, but Curtis can give you my email. You guys can blow me up about this stuff. I don't mind at all. I love helping people, love talking to people. No obligation whatsoever. Uh, it's fun for me to, to help people create in this area. So ask, ask the people you work with, anybody else involved in your business, if you can possibly survey people who would be likely customers, survey them on the whole thing, but especially on things like music choices, because you might have your own preferences, but someone else is like, um, no. Well, our videographer is incredibly talented, one of my favorite people in the world, but I veto like 50% of his music choices <laughs> for whatever reason. We're just not on the same page about it. Uh, other than that, there's the basic formatting issues, the technical formatting, like understand before, let's say you do this in iMovie or some other consumer level uh, uh, tool that you're creating a video with, you need to know when you first set up the project what the export parameters are. Like, is this 4K ultra high definition? Is it just HD? What format does Amazon accept? Most of the time they accept a lot. So it's not, you're not doing this for TV unless you are. Um, if you're doing this for TV, you should hire somebody, by the way. I think I, I would think that would go without saying, but if you're gonna spend money on, on, even if it's OTT type advertising with Amazon, which is substantially less expensive than national TV commercials, but it's still, I think their minimum buy-in is 15 grand a month. If you're spending that kind of money, hire somebody unequivocally. Yeah. You, you won't regret it. And, and yeah, then you also won't be worrying about, well, maybe if my ad were better, it would perform better or something. Um, so just make sure that the format of what you're exporting is what Amazon's going to use. 
uh, it has happened occasionally where we just misunderstood a client to begin with, like they needed 4K and we didn't shoot 4K and it was bad because uh, they were doing it on a trade show wall that was 30 feet high or something. And we just did not get the memo on that, which was not good. So um, just understanding that you're exporting in the right format. And I guess for the last thing I'll say, and then I'll finally uh, pass the baton back to Curtis. And thank you all so much for your interest and attention. Um, is this, this is really supposed to be fun, you know, and you're not supposed to be amazing at it the first time you do it. So be willing to fail, be willing to have a creative vision in your mind. This is true of any creative activity. Your taste is good. It's the reason you're on this call because you're a good seller and be able to do that. You've got to find the right products, figure out your supply line. Like you, you are, you are an entrepreneur and a problem solver and you're very capable of what you do. This isn't something most of you have probably done yet. And so you're not going to be amazing at it the first time you do it, but don't give up and just keep working on it. And of course, if you're looking for people to collaborate with, we're all about that. Um, but, but you will get to the point where you will be the disconnect between what you're seeing in your mind's eye and what you end up with will get smaller and smaller and smaller the more you do. So just keep plugging away at it. And um, hopefully these basic principles have helped. I know we're recording this. Maybe yeah. you can think back if you haven't taken detailed notes. I certainly never did that in school. So that's really it. Um, thank you again. It's been, it's been fun talking about it. Clearly, I could talk all day about this. <laughs> and that would probably be okay. Um, but, you know, you're right. You know, this, but this next section, just in case anyone's wondering, Will's not going anywhere. This next section, we are going to uh, slide through somewhat quickly, um, just mainly because um, it's, it's marketing principles. And yes, they're very important. And I don't want you to, um, you know, gloss over them in the sense of your, you know, what will covered or what we're going to cover after it or anything like that. But these next um, bits are really fundamentals and just think, think of them in relation to any type of marketing you're doing. It, it's, they apply to more than just video. So um, here, go to the next slide. Okay, good. Um, so, oh, okay, that's fine. Good. So surveys, surveys are uh, the key to statistics. So how does this actually translate? Um, for Amazon, it's it's multiple things. When fortunately there are tools out there, you know, managed by stats included, where you can really survey your audience in terms of what they end up buying for sure. And what really, what are the terms, the keywords um, and the phrases that they use to find whatever that item is. That is one type of surveys. And that, that you can use from beginning all the way through. But also when you get to the point where you have an audience, um, you have an email list, you have something that you can actually like reach out and talk to individuals. This is where you actually want to find out what about the things you like really drew them to what it is. Cause you might not necessarily know um, the reviews. Like I'm sure if anyone is like me, most of the time you leave a review, it's usually negative. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, you see five-star reviews, you see good reviews, but um, you're not always getting the things where they looked in and they, they went, oh, you know, I, I really like how the top of this water bottle is black. You know what I mean? There are, there are aspects that you won't necessarily know until you ask your whole audience and then you might come to the conclusion at the other end, hey, 80% of people bought my product because they really like this one aspect. And then that's where you lean heavily in, in terms of marketing. And that applies across all types of marketing, written, visual, video, everything. So um, you can kind of see other, other points to that there. Um, it really is kind of pointless to market unless you really know what people's buttons are. And we're going to kind of dive into something a little bit later, probably in like five minutes of how Light Touch is able to do that with uh, with something that we've kind of worked out with them. So uh, uh, jump to the next slide. So reality, meaning you as a marketer um, or the marketers you hire have to really, they're going to need to lean on you for reality because it's going to be very hard for someone to write copy or in copy includes a script, right? or come up with the bullet points of what is important about your product or service if they don't understand it themselves. So this is where it's very important. And it's part of why we went through those 10 points that Will covered is it's very important for you to understand what is important, what is the process. And you need to actually lean in with your understanding of what your product 
product is so that you can make sure that the people who are marketing it don't understand it to be like, it would be like, um, you know, an office chair versus a, you know, I don't know, like a gaming chair or something like that. If you communicate it, uh, if you communicated to a gaming chair audience, um, at what people would want to buy if it was an office chair, you'd miss the boat entirely. And you might be the only one who can really convey the difference between the two. And you can prevent a project from going, you know, one direction when it needs to go another direction. So that's kind of an, that's kind of a point on reality. You, this is where, whether you're doing it yourself, which in most cases, I'm sure you're not going to be doing it yourself. You're hiring a professional to do a video, but if you're hiring someone, it's very important that you're involved in the process. Uh, we're going to jump to the next slide there. Uh, yeah, so design. Um, this applies to your photos, but it also applies aesthetically speaking to a video. Um, you should, your picture, and this kind of plays in with like lifestyle photographs on Amazon, your picture should convey what the product is without any need for a caption. Um, it's just, it's just a perspective with which you should look at what your, what you have someone designing, what you have someone photographing, uh, the direction you give them, you have to kind of step into the shoes of the person who's going to be using it and think, how is someone going to be using this? And what does it really need to capture? And also, this is very important about design, you have to look at the purpose of the design, because the purpose first is to attract. If you sh if you throw something up there that is ugly, or uh, very pixelated or low quality or lighting is poor, what happens is it's not attractive to the eye. So someone's not going to look at it. And then once you do that, you have to generate interests. You have to go, they have to go, oh, so what's going on here? And then after that, you have to be able to deliver your message. So it's kind of like, um, you see this beautifully, I think with Nike, um, when Nike, uh, you know, does an imagery of their shoes or workout equipment, they're setting you into the exact scenario or the scene that you can go, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing with this. And they convey that very well. So that's kind of the important points of, uh, of design. So let's jump to the next one. Will, please step in at any point if there's some point that you should think should be added here. <laughs> um, next thing I would say is uh, timing, especially when we're talking about... Um, social media, you have like a third of a second to capture someone's attention. If you, and this is again, where survey of a different type comes along and Will made reference to this. If you um, have a room of, if you have like 10, 20, hundred friends, go to as many as uh, of, of them as possible and throw your photo or your post into a stream of other posts and slide through it. And then see if they actually understood or wanted to stop, or you got to do that survey to see if it actually captured the attention of your audience, right? So this is kind of one of those things you always have to take the perspective of the person who's going to be looking at it and make sure that it's really coming across to them. And in that split second, like they're, they're going through a Facebook feed, they're going through a YouTube feed, they're going through an Instagram feed. Are you capturing an, their interest in that third of a second that they have there? All right, let's jump to the next one. And that ties right into also on Amazon. When they're scrolling that page, page one, they're going to scroll all the way down. It's either at the, in the middle or at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Does that split second catch their eye? If it does, great, you got them. If it doesn't, they're going to keep scrolling. Yeah, it's true. It, and it works with ads as well as the organic yeah, mm -hmm. listings. Because it's like you think, oh, it's on a white background. What's the difference between this, between all of the others? Well, a huge difference. Yeah. Like, Go actually look at a listing. I know it's almost silly to say, but go actually look at it from the perspective of someone who wants to buy something. And you will see there's a massive difference between the listings on page one and the listings on page five, even with that white background. It still somehow manages to communicate. So it's important that you kind of keep that in, in you know, your mind when you know it's being laid out, right? Um, okay, good. So this is, this is, we're going to end with kind of like that most end this section on the most fundamental aspect of all of this. When it talks to marketing, talk about marketing, it's, you have to, sometimes there's so many complexities out there that you really should look at something for its most simplistic view. And what is kind of the purpose that you're doing with marketing? And really what you're trying to do with marketing is you're trying to find or strengthen or create a demand. 
it, it really is that simple. You either, you know, it's kind of like you look through the reviews and you find, hey, look, a lot of people like this one aspect. Good. What are you going to do? You're going to strengthen the marketing on that one aspect of those reviews. Or you're going to notice that you split tested an image and image three performs better than all of the rest. Good. You're going to ditch all the other images and use image three. You're strengthening some kind of demand, some kind of interest rare there. So the essence of marketing is to generate popularity. That is, uh, that is all part of creating want. You don't just want, you make it wildly popular to want it. Like the perfect example, everyone can see me, right? Uh, a Yeti water bottle. First off, talk about the best name ever for something. But then on top of that, this is one of those products where they probably wouldn't have to do very much marketing at all. I can tell from personal experience that everyone who's sitting in this room owns one to two Yeti water bottles. Here, Danon, uh, switch to yourself. Show your water bottle really quick. That's hilarious. He, he's right this there. This was not planned. This was not planned at all. There's a Yeti right there, and there's two on this desk. So there are three Yeti water bottles in this one room. Why? Because they mastered creating popularity. They mastered it. They did a perfect job. So... At the end of the day, when you're thinking of how am I going to market this, you want to, you kind of got to step outside the box too and figure out how do I really generate popularity? Well, I'm sure you could probably give a better insight into that, but that's, that's, this just happens to be a pretty damn good example that's sitting on next to every single person in this room. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what I'll just say simply about it is, um, um, sorry, let me put my video on again. Um, be, be willing to, again, look at it from the viewpoint of your ideal customer, not yours. It, it can be very challenging, especially when you're first doing it. You're so proud of what you're doing. And also you're working your butt off and like, let's say you're making this video on your own or, or you're just, you're listing in general. And again, I think you all are successful enough at this that you already know this, right? Because at the end of the day, you work on things. What you care about is how your sales are going. Right. And, and, and that, that is the truth of it. And so whatever you're marketing and promoting, if, if you know that there's a market for this product, there's other people selling it. Like it's not some crazy niche thing that just nobody's going to buy. Everything else comes down to exactly this. It's just creating the right demand, assuming that you know that you can drive enough traffic for people to consider buying it. And then, they're not buying it in the volume that you want, it's because you're not succeeding at this the way that you could be. And so I'm very fortunate. I, I feel like my business is completely future-proofed because video has just, since I started making video, the wave just keeps going and going and going almost exponentially at this point, right? And so again, your, your ability to communicate something that your audience really cares about make a game out of it, right? Like, like, don't feel like, okay, I did this and it better work and this has to be the one. It's like, don't worry about it. Like, just keep trying, right? Like, keep, keep it's almost like the baseball player who's willing to just go up and strike out. Most baseball players strike out most of the time, right? Yep. Like, just statistically, the best baseball players in the world strike out more than they don't, right? Yeah, like we're talking so, seven times strike out, three times make it through. That's a the damn good baseball player. The best players in the yeah. world. <laughs> right. And so, so just be willing um, to, to keep these key principles in mind. And again, just obsess about your audience. Like, what is it that they care about? What would they care about? And be ruthless with yourself. You know, you take photos, you do a video, um, but in a fun way, I don't mean beat yourself up over it. I mean, just be willing to be excited about something for a month. And then you look at it again and you're like, oh, that's crap. I'm going to make this so much better this time. Right. And just be willing to go and just constantly raise the bar, raise the bar, raise the bar, raise the bar. Um, again, you all know how to do this already in general with your listings. You understand the principle of it. Apply that to the creative content of it and just constantly be trying to make it better in any way that you can as time goes on. Inevitably, it's going to go in the direction that you want. Yeah, two things to add to that. Um, one thing we're talking about like a popularity point here. Uh, uniformly, that is created by word of mouth. So that's kind of one of those things where if you think about it, Amazon is kind of a way of like taking word of mouth and monetizing it. If you think of like what reviews are, but if you can get people actually out there talking about it with like outside of the Amazon 
review platform and they're actually telling their friends and their friends are buying and that person's telling their friends that's kind of that word of mouth and that's when you know you've you've you're going to really see explosive sales uh the other two things especially i i've seen this a lot with people but um you have to be patient because especially if we're talking off amazon you could be doing let's say you're doing recurring content let's say you're regularly putting out content and you're throwing content onto your social media page and it's video and it's photo and it's this and it's that and what, what and sometimes it can feel sluggishly slow and it's just important especially with video too you have to be patient because sometimes what happens is you have a celebrity who sees your product he's like i love this he buys it and throws it on his page well he might never have seen that if you didn't do all the content that you did do so it's kind of one of those things where you kind of just got to be patient and, and it will happen if you keep at you know like he kind of gave the baseball example it's the number of at bats you got to keep hitting and you got to keep swinging and you will hit it um and that kind of I would say that that sort of sums up this next, this section kind of on like story marketing, really diving into what is, what is, uh, what are some of these fundamental principles? So let's jump on to this next section here. Um, okay. So, oh, perfect. Good. So this is um, a testimonial that we pulled from one of our customers. We had a small beta group that we kind of ran through with, uh, with Will's team and, um, and this is um, kind of our testimony. I'll read it aloud here. Um, I couldn't be more satisfied about my experience with Light Touch Media. From minute one, everyone on their team made it clear their customer satisfaction is their only true goal. They rapidly put together a very professional video ad featuring two of my products and were more than happy to make tweaks and changes until I absolutely loved the final product. At the outset, they wanted to know how I would measure the ad's success. Naturally, my response was sales. Well. As they say, the proof is in the pudding. My sales have increased 250%. If you aren't getting a video, sorry, I need to scroll. If you aren't getting a video made by this team, you are absolutely leaving money on the table. Um, and again, I, I, I'm, I, we did this whole webinar because of the results that customers we put in front of them uh, received with, um, with Will's team. We wouldn't have done this webinar unless we had a light touch media group. Now, are they the only company out there that can produce effective and amazing content? No, but they are one of them. Um, here, let's jump to the next slide. Oop. Okay, cool. So um, we here's the here's the bottom line on this. Like, we're gonna show you kind of like what it would take for you to work with light touch. Um, this isn't going to feel like a pitch. I'm not going to sit here and like bang you over the head with, you know, you should do this or blah, 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 blah. It, it, it's very simple. Um, we're going to show you kind of two of the packages that um, they put together for our audience. Um, they're very specific to Amazon sellers. Uh, the pricing is dramatically less than anything you've seen uh, from someone else of their caliber. Um, part of it is also because, um, we we have a good connection with these guys they know that customers we send over they know what our customer base is like we we have amazing customers everyone who's on this call we you know we've worked with you guys on you know different services different um you know mbs services other services we know what you guys are like we know you're you're the best audience that someone could ask for um and also there's something uh, amazing that Managed by Stats is going to be bringing to the table for video and product photography. But uh, we wanted to highlight just these first two little packages here. So um, they're going to be they're going to be putting together basically uh, for anyone who's interested in this. And we have a landing page which we'll show you the URL in just one second. But um, a 45 second video um, with also a 15 second cut down. Now, why did we go with those numbers? 45 seconds is what Amazon works with when it comes to a sponsored brand video ad. 15 seconds is sort of a sweet spot when it comes to interest on social media. So much so that if you guys are, anytime you watch a YouTube video, you'll kind of note that if a video is longer than 15 seconds, they'll only force you to watch five seconds of it. 
And it might be a 30 minute video, which I've seen those on mm -hmm. YouTube, which is Absolutely. ridiculous. My like kids will watch some of those little things that just come on as an ad. But like, it's like literally they'll minutes. sometimes throw That's... an entire episode of something yeah. as a as an ad, which is yeah. blows my mind. But the point is, if it's longer than 15 seconds, you're not forced to watch more than five seconds of it. If it's 15 seconds or less, you have to watch the full 15 seconds. So it kind of, and especially with YouTube being the second most used search engine on the planet behind a Google search, this is definitely a sweet spot that you want to make sure that you're taking advantage of. So that's why 45 second with a 15 second edit and then product photography, because we talked about this, your picture, your photo on your listing for an ad and for organic ranking is vital. If you have a crappy photo, you're, you know, it's one of the biggest things that we run into as a problem with, um, with finding we're not finding, but approving someone to be a customer with PPC Logic. Really, it's the biggest thing is the photos, it, just the listing quality in general. Yeah. If and you can you can speak to that point too if you want. But really, it's like if you if your listing can't really sell your product, um, it goes right into that that split second point where they're going to be scrolling through a hundred other items just like yours. And if yours doesn't stand out in some way or isn't on par in quality they're going to skip right over it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly right. And you'll see these listings where it's like, you can tell it's like a really low pixelated image that was literally like cut out and then thrown onto a white background and the lighting doesn't match at all. And it kind of is like, just, it's not going to sell. That's you don't see that on page one. It's just not a thing. Right. So that's why we, we wanted to kind of showcase these two packages first, um, 40 set, 45 second video, 15 second custom edit and then product photography. Um, we're not going to also like, <laughs> I feel like sometimes like with webinars, it's like, if you buy this today, you get blah or, but first we're not going to do any of that. There are a couple bonuses you're going to get, but you're going to get them anytime you buy them. So if you go forward with light touch in like two weeks, you're still going to get the bonuses. We just wanted you to have kind of these extras that we're going to include no matter when, just so it kind of incentivizes you more to, to go forward with them as a company. So uh, let's jump to the next slide. We're going to, I'll show you just a couple of these things. So you're going to get our Amazon PPC course from beginner to pro free. Um, this is a $250 course, literally as of today, yesterday, we, we closed off sort of our beta program on the course. We, you know, we were getting a lot of feedback of like what works, what doesn't, what do people need more help with? So we were kind of going through all that. But, you know, this is no longer a free course um, as of literally this morning. So um, if you were to go try and buy this uh, off our university.managedbystats.com, it would be $250. So if you sign up um, for any of their packages, even including photos, it's just 200, it's free for you guys. Um, and we cover so much on this course. And it's also a course that we're going to be updating regularly. So we're actually, um, I was going back and forth with Mark and Rob on a couple updates I want to do to the course based on some of the tactics that are showing very successful with PPC logic. It's, it's a great way to kind of beta test strategies because they're seeing it rapid fire. And there's a couple things that are really amazing that are going to be in this course, probably in the next, I would say month, uh, let's jump to the next one. So you'll, you'll get that, uh, PPC course for free. And then also um, we mentioned uh, earlier that it's very important that you survey your audience for any marketing you do so much. So it's almost not, sometimes it's not worth marketing at all without having done some form of surveys. So we kind of threw our hat in the ring as well and said, anyone who goes forward with a package with light touch is going to receive um, a listing and keyword analysis. So we're basically, you're going to send us your ASIN uh, or ASINs, depending on, you know, how many videos you're going forward with. And for each one, we're going to do a full um, listing analysis. We're going to cover every single aspect of that listing from photos, you know, title, description, bullets, backend keywords. And if you have A plus content, we're also going to cover all of that. We're going to review every ounce of that. But then on the keyword side, we're going to be looking at, there's sort of like this sort of sweet spot between keywords that are relevant, perfectly relevant to your product, but then also, you know, search frequency rank. Search frequency and also, um, you know, how popular they are. You could have a long tail version that's, uh, you know, five or six words long that could be very, very apropos to your listing, but doesn't have that search volume along with it. So there's kind of this, this sweet spot, these, uh, these money keywords 
really. So we're going to be doing that full analysis for you as part of this so that you know, A, what keywords you need to have in your listings, but also what keywords can go along with the video. Yeah, that's right. So it makes it so you know what, because then you'll ha have a better understanding of what keywords you should be using advertising wise. You'll know what keywords should be in your listing. So if you have issues in your listing, you'll also, you know, receive help with this and you can make those tweaks in your listing. But then those advertising keywords, your, your video message aligns perfectly with it. So it makes it so that the whole flow from beginning where someone is just searching on Amazon seeing a listing to an ad in a, in a series of listings on page one, page two, whatever, it all actually communicates and, you know, gets across, this is that product that you're looking for. So that's sort of um, why we think that it's, it's funny because we did do some study. This isn't something anyone else is doing that you can't like, I'm not saying this as a pitch. I don't want to sound pitchy. So smack me if I sound pitchy, but the thing about this to me is that there isn't anyone else who is um, doing this level of analysis on Amazon before you make a video. So I think that this is something that kind of adds a lot of weight to everything that Will and his team bring to the table. It's so vital because if you think about it from a, if you're the buyer, right, you, you have a product, let's say it's your product, but you take the different side of the, uh, the view there, you're looking, you're going to be the customer. If they type a, a keyword and you have, you know, that, that keyword is going to be very, very um, uh, high search volume. They type that keyword. They're going to see your product come up on the page, hopefully, if, if you have organic ranking, but then they're going to see your video come up. And if your video uh, has that keyword in it, also as a visual, it's like, it, it's, it's an immediate like, oh, this is what I'm looking for. That's what I was looking for. They see the ad and they go, oh, okay, that's, that's what I want. And then if it, if it communicates nicely in that video, boom, you got, you got a, a most likely a good sale. Yeah. So we're going to do this analysis for anyone who um, does any sort of a, you know, service with light touch. Um, once we do the analysis, you'll actually get a chance to meet with the consultant who did that analysis to make sure again, that it's relevant because kind of like that chair example that we gave, that I gave, um, there might be office chair, uh, you know, keywords that are high search rank frequency rank. But if someone is searching for those words and finds your gaming chair, they're gonna be like, this is not what I'm looking for at all. Right. So it's very important. And that's why we included that bit in there. Make sure we're going to, you know, you'll have a chance to sit with that person and make sure it's very relevant. And then it gets passed on to light touch so that they can know exactly where they should be marketing and how they should be marketing this product. This next bit is, um, a second course that we put together with Light Touch Media Group. So you're going to see a little intro to it right now, and then we'll cover a lot more details. As an Amazon seller, you're dealing with constant challenges. How do I effectively drive traffic to my products profitably? The first thing I want to communicate about making video is that it should be fun. I've produced over 6,000 videos. These are fundamental principles to making effective video that are gonna carry over into everything that you do. You've seen the importance of sponsored brand videos, and I'm gonna show you how connecting this up inside of Seller Central can get you a lot more exposure. That's that's the link to it, but we'll, we'll show it again in a second, so don't worry, it, it might go away right now, but it's coming back. So we, um, we've spent a lot of time on this course because we know how important this topic is to someone's success. So we, we have hours and hours and hours of content from kind of like extrapolating a lot further, everything we've covered so far, all the way to how do you create video? What are the important points? And here's the thing I want you guys to think with, because this is important across the boards. This isn't something that you should only watch or only think with or only know this information if you're planning on doing it yourself. It doesn't just apply there. If you plan on hiring anybody to do anything, and I'm sure you guys have experienced this with your own PPC or listing analysis or any aspect of your Amazon business, the more understanding you have on the topic, the more you can make sure that you're getting the product you want out the other end. So I would say for anyone who's planning on diving into the realm of videos for their brand, this is 
absolutely essential information to really make sure you get a good product out the other end. So we're going to also show you how to set up sponsored video ads, sponsored brand video ads. We're going to go over also how to, we have um, a very good friend in business, Adam. He, he's at the head of a uh, advertising agency, and he's going to also show you best practices for setting up Facebook ads, YouTube ads, um, how to really take advantage of these platforms. Obviously, when I say Facebook, that includes Instagram, how to really connect with your audience on all these different platforms. Also, the thing that has been the bane of most Amazon sellers existence for a while that Amazon's finally solved is um, attribution. So Amazon attribution, we're going to walk you through how to set that up on your product and on the ads you have off Amazon. So you can actually track and make sure the ads that are out there are converting on Amazon. So we're going to walk you through best practices on all of this. So by the end of this course, you're going to know everything that you need to know to properly set up video content on off Amazon. Um, you'll be a total pro by the end of this. It's It was a hefty undertaking, but it was very, very well, uh, well worth it. Um, let's jump to the next slide on that. Um, I'm pretty sure the next slide is going to say something about, yes, okay, so the price of the course um, normally is $250. So normally you're going to be able to kind of get a full top to bottom understanding of this whole topic and it's going to cost you $250. Um, for anyone, let's say there's someone who wants to dive into that course, isn't ready to do the packages, um, isn't ready to do content with light touch, you can still get the course um, on its own. And I think through Sunday, we're going to have the price of the course be $97. So if you sign up for that between now and I think it's midnight Sunday, um, you'll be able to use um, a coupon. The coupon is light touch and you'll get uh, the course not for 250, but for 97. Now also um, we, we are going to actually have that course be available for you. Like purchase it today. It's going to actually go live on Friday not Friday as in tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow. So basically a week from tomorrow, anyone who purchases this course, you'll, you'll get the, you'll start getting the content in a week, but this is going to be, it's an, it's an awesome course. We're really proud of what we produced on that. Um, here, let's jump to the next slide on that. It's, it's, it's amazing. We're, we're really, we're really excited about this one. Um, so here we're going to dive into just kind of the pricing for those two packages that we showed there. So regularly, to give you guys an idea. And Will, I, I think that it's, at, I don't know if that's the case across the boards, the regularly price for a 40 second, 45 second video. I think it's, is it possibly more? Yeah, I, it's, I mean, a lot of virtually everything we do typically is custom quoted. Uh, and so there's just so many different variables with yeah. it. Um, I really do like helping entrepreneurs. You know, I have a soft spot for them being one myself. Um, and I, I literally have family members who are Amazon sellers and just so many of my friends. And so we just, we wanted to do it. Obviously we can't lose our shirt on this. You know, we're not a charity, but we're, uh, I wanted to do the best we possibly could, uh, to make it reasonable for folks. You know, I, I don't want the price to be a barrier. So we did everything we possibly could. Um, we don't have those same conversations with, you know, shell <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or whatever. Um, so we're, I'm, I'm, we're definitely giving a good deal. Uh, we're being taken care of. We're going to take amazing care of people with it as well. Um, yeah, exactly. So um, obviously this is kind of the thing. If you came to light touch and wanted the same services and you didn't come through MBS, you, you wouldn't get the rates you're going to get here. So um, you're also going to get that 15 second custom edit. We're going to do the listing and keyword analysis. Uh, that's a typo. It's actually supposed to say 250. Like if you came to us, if you wrote to support at managed by stats and said, Hey, you know, I want to do that listing and keyword analysis. It's $250. So um, you can do that by the way, shoot us an email on that, but um, you'll get that with it. You'll get the PPC course. You'll get expanding your Amazon brand using video course. So, you know, if you got all of that stuff, you know, without going through managed by stats, you would pay about 11 grand. So um, we're giving it to you for $72.50. So um, the, the QR code right up there, again, we'll jump off this slide. So if you don't catch it in time, it'll be at the end. But um, that QR code will bring you to the page where you can sign up for that. Um, and then let's jump to the next slide. And the next one is about um, product photography. So um, there we go. 
So product photography, again, these are going to be your main image. So on a white background, lifestyle photos, and then also any graphics that you like explainer type graphics. Any and all of these things, Light Touch is going to be putting together for you. And um, along with, again, that listing and keyword analysis, you're going to get the courses. So you would usually pay about $2,500 out there, and you're going to get that stuff for basically 50% off. So it's $1,250 um, if you come into it through Managed by Stats. And again, that keyword, that QR code leads you to the landing page for that. QR code is the same for both. It's leading you to a page. You, you know, say choose package and then you pick whatever is best fitting for you. We also have three other packages on there to choose from. So go check those out because you might find something that's better fit for you. Um, so we'll jump onto the next slide and you'll see the QR codes for all three of these packages. Um, so that's what that QR code there is for, but otherwise just go to lighttouch.managebystats.com uh, and you'll be able to, um, check out the packages. You'll also, we, we gave a little bit of additional content on there. So if there's a couple more questions you have, you can go on there, check that out. In addition to that, um, we don't expect that everyone is going to get all their questions answered by this webinar and that sales page. So you definitely will be able to uh, reach out and, you know, get any further questions that you have answered. Um, Devin and, you know, he, he basically, I've, I've definitely sat, you know, over his shoulder and heard some of kind of like the stuff that he's covering with these guys. That's one thing I can say about Will's team. Um, when he says caring is important to him, it's very true. Um, I'm constantly impressed by what I see from these guys and Devin will handle all your questions. He's going to take really good care of you. If you do feel like you have, um, you know, more information you need. Otherwise go ahead and pick, uh, select whatever package is best for you. Go to that URL and select a package that fits what you need. And Will and his team are going to do some absolutely amazing work. And you're going to see kind of like what that testimonial said, you, you could see, you know, 250% increase in sales. That's <clears throat> nothing to shake a stick at. That's, that's well worth the cost of entry. So that's kind of um, it in the way of what we wanted to cover with you guys uh, in terms of content. But I kind of find that this Q&A section is almost just as important because I know you guys have questions, whether it's about packages or it's about video content or the process, anything and everything, feel free to like, this is also why I have Mark here with me because he is, I would consider Mark a absolute expert when it comes to PPC. I would consider Will an absolute expert when it comes to video. I would consider myself present. <laughs> We have, um, we have a couple of questions coming in. Yeah, so um, we'll, we'll hit these questions. Yeah, uh, this one's for, for Will's team. Uh, with the photo package, uh, do they shoot custom lifestyle images or use stock images and 3D render? Um, so I'm just turning on my uh, camera and everything here. Um, so we're going to shoot what's best for you and what you need. Um, so yeah, I, I think, do we want to just stop the share again, the, the it's light touch managed by stats.com. I think you're going to send out info about that afterward, Curtis, as yeah. well. As yeah. 100%. Yeah. If you want so to, we'll I'll, I'll just stop so great. we can talk for a minute. Right. Perfect. Um, so, um, it varies based on the product. So, so we've done, uh, ads for everything from entire bed frames, like huge things that had to be shipped in multiple boxes down to very small things you can hold in your hand. Um, typically we wouldn't do like this package wouldn't include, uh, an actual 3d render of the product itself, for instance. Um, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm open to ideas on that. Actually, um, it would be interesting to do that because we probably for that budget, I hadn't thought about that, but if we needed to, I'm, I'm sure that's possible. Um, so I'd love to talk with you about it. Um, again, we'll, you'll be able to contact, um, Devin on our team and, and we'll understand your needs and what you're trying to accomplish. And if we can do it within the framework of what we set up, we'll absolutely do that. Um, but typically it's, it's either uh, studio and or lifestyle photos of, you know, if it's, if it's shorts or, or a piece of sports equipment or things like that, just making it look super pro. Um, and again, giving the right kind of context um, visually for what it is, right? Just, what, what people are going to expect when they, yeah. when they get it. Yep. The awesome. And then uh, this question, uh, Curtis, this is uh, what was the course? So the $97, which course was that the video course or the PPC course? Yeah. It's the expanding your brand using video course. That's the one that's $97. Um, 
PPC course 250, um, both, I would jump on that video course quickly. Um, not because it's like, there's a limited number of seats, but I don't want you to forget about it. You go to buy it on Monday and it's $250. So save yourself some money and, and go get that. Or, you know, go forward with any of the packages and then it's free. All right. Perfect. Um, let's see if there's any other questions. Um, Okay, uh, Jeff had a question earlier. Um, is it more important, um, so he says, a how-to video posted in the listing to aid conversions or brand slash product video that comes up in Amazon search page when a customer searches for your product? So in your opinion, what would be more important? Um, I, he was asking Will, I can also speak to that as well. So. Um, Having a video in your listing as, you know, like your fifth image, fifth uh, image in your, in your listing stack, um, that's going to be very key once someone clicks on your listing, right? Mm -hmm. So they do a search, <clears throat> they see a whole bunch of, whole bunch of products, they select your product, and now they're going to see your, your image stack. Okay. Now, if they look at your video, yeah, that's going to help conversion. That's uh, hugely important. But before they even get there, how do you get people to your listing? How do you get people to click on your listing? The more important thing, in my opinion, would be doing a brand video ad to get people to your product. If you did a brand video ad that was showing, getting people to your listing and you didn't have a video in your listing stack, okay, you know, I, I would still favor doing a branded video that would drive people to your listing. If you had five to seven images or seven to nine images in your, in your uh, image stack, that communicate well, they, they show what the product is, they show the features, the benefits, uh, nice graphics, whatever. Okay, that can still convert to a sale. Um, and then of course, having a video in there as well would help even more, you know, showing a demonstration of the product or whatever, but getting people to your listing with a brand video, that would be what I would consider more important because that's driving traffic to your listing to get you sales. Then use that also same video, like fine, it might not be 100,000% perfect, but take that video ad, throw the same video in your listing, use it in both places. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say driving traffic would be that, that primary purpose, that bigger, it's going to have a bigger effect. Um, Cause then you can also use the same video off Amazon. So yep. you, you have more places to use it. You have Facebook, Instagram, you know, Twitter, you have YouTube, you have in Amazon, you have more places that you can put that there and then, yeah, utilize it also in your listing, I would say as kind of like a secondary. Yeah, and for what it's worth, we'll, we'll talk through, th these are the exact conversations we have with every client uh, for every project. Where are you using this? What's the context? How do you measure success? Who's the audience for it? People are very forgiving. If, if the video is well done, and it's succinct and it, it really nails the value proposition. They're not gonna care if, if you see it, if they see it in the ad and then they see it in the listing yeah. and then they see it on your social. If they're right. seeing the same thing again and again, repetition is not a bad thing if they're seeing something that's effective and it works. So we can come up with something, uh, or you can yourself, of course, as, as, you're, as you're building these things out um, that will work in multiple contexts. Yeah, awesome. And, and the other thing there is that um, if you're anything like me as a buyer, if there's a video listing um, or a video ad, I'm going to watch that before I click on any listing, any link. So it's going to be that first point. And there are many times where that's the only thing I looked at. I didn't even then look at the photos because the video is so well encapsulated what it is that I purchased just based off that. Yeah. Another question here. Uh, where do, where do, where do you put the branded video to drive to your listing? So uh, Amazon uh, sponsored brand videos show up on the sales page, right? Where all the products are when you're, when you're searching to, to buy something. Um, the awesome thing about brand videos right now, um, and I don't know if this will stay this way forever, but what right now they literally take up four spots yeah. on a page. Um, so they usually appear uh, about halfway down the first page and then on pages two, three, four, and five and whatnot, they appear at the bottom. So, but they take up a whole row, um, you know, four products uh, uh, wide. And uh, so you have about half of that screen is, is the video. And then the other half is your product details. Uh, let's see here. 
how many videos are allowed on a listing plus a plus and an a plus content uh, on your listing only one uh, video is allowed to be uploaded um, in addition to your images that you have and then on a plus um, I'm not totally certain if you can have more than one on there I'll have to check um, I've seen two videos on on a page cool. I've seen two there videos on a listing I don't know that you can do more than two but I know you I've seen two um, so that kind of there you go you get two. <laughs> uh, another question: Does it cost a great deal to put uh, on sponsored ads? Um, again, it's it's um, it goes with whatever market you're going into, and you have to look at you know um, where are you in compared to the person in front of you and the and the person behind you on ranking, um, and how competitive is that subject? You know, if you're doing uh, sandals okay, it's probably not crazy uh, competitive. If you're doing, um, you know, iPhone phone cases, that's probably going to be a very competitive category or uh, supplements, you know, that's a very competitive category. So um, at, you know, money wise, you got to think with, okay, what niche are you in? And what is it going to cost you to get your, your videos, um, you know, showing? Uh, one of the things with the videos is that it is a, um, Kind of like an auction or you know you, you you have to bid top in order to get your your product uh your video shown on page one so if someone else is bidding higher than you uh for those keywords um their video is going to show on page one and yeah. there's only one spot for a video on page one there's not you know normal sponsored products uh you have i think five or seven or or more um ads that show up around page one so there's multiple spots for people to show up in but whereas video there's only one spot mm -hmm. and if you're bidding top dollar for it then you show up yeah otherwise you show up on page two three four or five or whatever uh down at the bottom yeah and and this is kind of a different way of looking at that question is that um its cost is relative again like he's saying to the category but if you look at it compared to the average cost that people are spending on sponsored product sponsored display and non-video sponsored brand um, it's less. It's across the boards when we studied every single account that Managed by Stats has, um, it's 20% less than any other um, brand type. Now, um, does that mean that you're going to spend more or less on that one type of ad? Yeah, sure. You might be spending more, but if it converts more, does it really matter? No, it doesn't right. really matter. A good example is... Um... You could have a very competitive category, very, very, uh, a ton of sellers uh, jumping into that category, doing sponsored product uh, ads. And so you jump in and try to do your ads with your product, and you're going to be fighting so hard to get uh, your product shown up for certain keywords. But if only three or four of your, those competitors are doing videos, you, you, you'll, you can get your video shown up uh, on page one and get your, your sales going. We had a client who did that exact same thing. She, she jumped into a very, very competitive product, very popular. I, uh, I don't know if it's just, I don't know why it got so popular, but there's a lot of people doing it and sponsored products ads were just not converting. It was, it was, it was just a very, very expensive endeavor to try to do sponsored products. She created a video. It wasn't some, you know, crazy great video. I, I don't know if it was done with her iPhone or not, but it was, it was a good quality video, you know, a uh, fair quality video. And um, she, it was, I think it was her video and maybe one or two other competitors were doing videos and all of her ad spend just went to her videos. And that video, you know, drove her sales up because, no one knew there's only two other people competing on those keywords. Then we've also got some of these things in the Q and a side, as opposed to just chat, right? Yeah. So on this side, um, okay. So Howard is asking, what is the coupon code for the $97 offer? It's light touch L I G H T T O U C H two T's in there. The Did I spell T's. that right? It kills you every time. I know, right? It's the two T's always the two T's. <laughs> yep. Um, what else do we have around that side? I see a couple in here. Let's see. Does it, uh, does the course, the video course cover details of advertising off Amazon? Yeah. So it definitely covers, um, points off Amazon. So we, we have, um, a company that we work with, uh, the guy who, you know, runs the company, the CEO's name is Adam. Um, Adam has, um, a company where they specialize on AFOM, off Amazon advertising. So they specialize Facebook ads, Google ads, 
YouTube ads as an extension of Google ads, Instagram as an extension of Facebook ads. And um, he's going to, we have a lesson in there or actually a whole section in there that covers best practices of how to set up these off Amazon advertisements. And then Mark did a, a training in there on how to take those, drive them through Amazon attribution so you know how well these things are performing. So in that course, there's definitely a chunk on how to do that. Um, it's, it's, it's a good course. It's a really good course. It is top to bottom. Awesome. Um, how often should you replace or rotate your sponsored brand video ads? Um, when they stop converting, it's I mean, kind of it's, yeah, it's kind <laughs> of like, yeah, if, if it's still getting you money, it's getting you sales, um, let it keep going. I mean, if it's, if you have a product that's a recurring audience, so uh, some kind of subscription based or, or uh, repeat buyers, then, uh, okay, maybe you, you'll want to, you know, switch out your ads a little bit more often. But if it's not, if it's, if it's just a, you know, a cup or a pen or flip flops or whatever, um, you're constantly trying to get new public, new, uh, new clients. So yeah. keep it going. Yeah. And it's also one of those interesting things, like it's another one of those marketing rules out there that you have to survey your audience, uh, regularly. If a survey is over a year old, it is outdated. So, and the reason for that is people's, uh, perception of what the, you know, important features or attributes of something change over time. Um, it could be that someone goes and, you know, does a video on the coolest thing about the, uh, a new computer is blank. Right. And that is maybe something that no one is ever like, you know, promote it as a major feature. And now that is the thing that people go and look for. So it might be that, again, that's where it kind of comes down to a conversion point. You throw a video out there. If it's not hitting those key surveyed uh, topics, then it's it becomes slowly or quickly irrelevant to that audience. So again, like Mark said, and like Will kind of mentioned in there, it's really a conversion point. Jeff has Absolutely. a fun question, which I can probably answer. He said, how do you handle creation of lifestyle footage for technical products like a laser engraver? Do you need to rely on the manufacturer to provide some of the footage of the product in action? So if I'm understanding the question, they are selling laser engraved end products is the idea like like it's a laser engraving no it looks like it's a laser engraver is the product maybe jeff is jeff are you asking this because you don't have the product yet and you're looking to do a video ad which would and the i can just sort of give a general answer one option we could do is animation uh, so you can show as much of the live products as you can but if you need to sort of show a day in the life kind of experience or user experience and there's just no real there's no simple, easy way to do that in the real world for whatever the complications are because of that. Uh, if we can't possibly get it together physically, then we could we can animate it. So you can tell that story. Um, for these budgets, we can do some killer animation. I mean, we can literally do not Pixar level, but we can animate walking, talking, full characters that that are you know that look in that in that realm. Um, maybe not their water effects, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but everything else, but we can make it look amazing. And then you, and then you can sh feature the, the, the actual product at the very end, for instance, to show the actual product. So there, there's all kinds of creative ways you could get around that. Uh, if you, for whatever reason, if you, if you don't have the physical ability to show what you need to show last night. Yeah. And another thing to take into consideration um, when it comes to sponsored brand video ads, you have to have brand registry. So, and that's one other thing that we cover in the course um, is the fastest way to get brand registry. Cause the whole thing behind brand registry is you have to have a trademark. And in order to get to the point where Amazon will accept, you know, that what it, you, know, you don't have to get all the way through the process, but in order to even get to where Amazon's going to accept it, it can be, I know, Dana, you were telling me that for one product, it was like a year on one product because it's so much back and forth, but it's 13 months. 13 yeah. months. Yeah. So for a lot of people, that can be the largest hurdle to getting uh, sponsored, to, to getting into sponsored brand video ads and things like that. But Amazon does offer a service and we cover it in the course um, 
you you could be out of there ready to rock and roll, roll with brand registry in seven to 10 days. So there's definitely strategies out there. <laughs> Danon just literally went like this. In other words, what he's signifying is don't waste your time and potential ability to market just because there's an upcharge fee by Amazon to use their service. I'm going to switch to me real quick. Yeah, but they're not going to be able to hear you very well. Yeah, well, you just said it, but literally don't do it yourself. It is not worth it. Even going to a lawyer, just do it straight through Amazon, please. <laughs> Uh, there you go from the horse's mouth. No, but what we cover in the course exactly how to do that. So that's another one of those things that is very, it's a, it's a very important tip on actually, you know, being able to market the, the whole gist of this is that Amazon wants legitimacy. They want everything to be, um, they want everything to actually they don't want knockoffs. Let's put it that way. Right. Yeah. They don't want knockoffs. Yeah. They don't want, um, products that should have certain certifications that don't have certain certifications or anything that's going to be a low quality product. So they offer some of their primo features to people who have brand registry, because they know if you've gone through brand, brand registry, you've got a serious product, you've got a serious brand. So that's kind of, that's kind of the gist on that. Yep. Awesome. And then, um, <clears throat> yeah, Will, you're going to have to give up the, uh, spill the beans on what kind of camera you have. Well, I'm <laughs> Tony's asking. <laughs> um, yeah, so part of it is lighting uh, that makes it look good, but I, I'm basically, I'm using, it's a Sony A7R three little, little Roman numeral, um, but virtually every camera there, they're between, there's kind of a range between maybe it's 2,500, you might even be able to get used ones as low as like 2,000 to 5,000, and then there's a higher range that's more like 10 to 15 and then there's like 25 to 50. Um, you could you can do great work. The thing about cameras like the I also have an iPhone 12 and it really is in so it's my dog. Hey there. Um, and uh, it's amazing what you can do even with just absolute consumer level products. There's just more flexibility with the lenses, with um, the these cameras allow you to manipulate how much light is coming in. The, the phones do everything for you, so it's all automated. But if you don't like what they're automating, then it can be very challenging to do other things. Yeah. Um, so, but any any of these range, whatever brand you like, I happen to like Sony. A lot of people use Canon, um, Nikon. All, all the major brands have competitive cameras and you could go down the rabbit hole of comparison shopping for yeah. years as I can. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, and unless you're planning on doing that professionally, it's probably not necessarily the greatest use of your time. Yeah. Now, if you're planning on having a lot of branded content where you're doing, you know, recurring things on social media and you have a team in-house, then that's a different story. But yeah, I, I would, yeah, probably skip. <laughs> if you're just, a, if you're like a tech nerd like me, if you just like stuff, then it's fun, right? And you can get it. It's an expensive it. hobby. <laughs> yes. Ask yeah, I have the video photo bug. So my wife yeah. hates that. <laughs> yeah, I get into trouble all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, here's the thing, guys. So we're down to, we've still got another almost 70 people that are on this webinar. Now, let's be honest, some of these guys are people who hit record and then went and, you know, they're playing with their dog right now. But um, if you, if there's 70 people on here still, you know, hanging around, give us more questions. Tell us your questions that, you know, those searing questions, because you're not necessarily going to have many opportunities to have someone who's made 6,000 videos for Fortune 100 companies, you know, in front of you. Um, so hit us, hit us with some questions. Otherwise, we're going to, we're going to start wrapping. Yeah, we've got one video here. Uh, what do you find is the optimal length for an Amazon video? Um, Will, do you have any kind so, of experience? So sh short, the shortest you can make it in general is best. It's part of the reason we're doing a 45 second version and then a 15 second cut down. Um, it's, it can be extremely challenging to give a full value proposition pitch in 15 seconds. That's more of kind of the highlight reel, the teaser. Um, in, in 45 seconds, if you can't do a thorough enough job um, communicating the value, then there's there's probably some extraneous info in there that you don't need. 
So 45 seconds can be challenging, but it's, it's enough time that you can really hit all the key points, all the major buttons, so to speak. Um, so that's between 15 to 60 seconds is typically what we see. But we, for this, we decided that 40, the main focus on 45 seconds and then a cut down for 15. That'll help with social, et cetera. Um, but, but the shorter, the better. In general. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Another question here. Uh, does YouTube for showing an ad uh, five seconds for a 45 second video and make you watch the full ad for a 15 second video? That's exactly right. That's kind of what we were. That's the other reason that that 15 second cut down is very important. A 45 second ad, what YouTube will do is it'll give it to you for five seconds and then it'll show, it'll continue showing the rest, but it'll give you the option to skip or, you know, to go on to whatever video you're trying to watch. So under 15 seconds, though, it makes you watch the entire video before it lets you see the rest of your content. So that's sort of why that's such a sweet spot when it comes to YouTube advertising. When, and the response is, so 15 seconds is best. So I'll give you an example. I think it's called Squatch. Is that ringing a bell with the, with the blonde dude with the long hair and the beard? Oh, it's yes, like, yes, the soap. Like yeah. soap yes. Right? Yes. Yep. So that's, a, that's a whole series. It was kind of started by Dollar Are Shave. Are you pouring sludge on your body? That guy, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it was, if you ever go to, Do if you look at the original Dollar Shave Club video, that was the guy that knocked it out of the park with that viral video that he made for no money. And it's just funny. It's just good. So in that case, you're, they, they built up a whole brand and brand awareness with the longer form videos. It was so good in the first five seconds that instead of like, you're, you're, you're already, you're moving your mouse over or your finger over, you're already getting ready. And you're like, ah, oh, you got me. So they hooked you <laughs> literally in the first five seconds. Like, what is this guy? What is this fool doing? Right. And then you watch it and then you're aware of the brand. But even afterward, even the 15 second versions, they kind of make you chuckle again. It's really making you think back to the longer form video that you sat through because it's so damn entertaining. Right. So yeah. 15, it's, we, we're, we're trying to give the best of both worlds here, but I don't, I don't think there's a, you also like, especially for your page, you want to communicate the value fully right and it's very challenging to do that in 15 seconds so like youtube pre-roll 15 seconds probably a safer bet but if you do a great if you do a good enough job hooking them in in, in the first five you might want to take the whole time allotted you know what i mean there's just inevitably you're going to be able to communicate a whole lot more in 30 or 45 seconds than you can yeah like dollar shave club purple mattresses squatty potty yeah, you're, you're going to watch the whole thing, but you know how it is. A lot of people are just trying to get to their other videos. So that's kind of why there's both options there. And you should split test because it might be for your audience that, you know, the longer form actually gets watched more and you get, cause it's not just how many people click it's the conversion on the purchase on the back end. Right. So it might be that that 15 second gets more people into your page, but maybe the 45 second actually had better conversion and you get more purchases from that. So you just got to split test that kind of thing too. Yeah. Um, awesome. There's, there's a, a fun question. Where can we see examples of outstanding video ads? You can uh, search on YouTube, like award-winning commercials, award-winning video ads. Typically the Super Bowl tends to be like the, the all-star game for commercials as well. But what I'd actually recommend you do is you go look at your competition. You look on Amazon or on social media, do everything you can to understand what everybody else is doing. It's like the analogy, you don't have to be faster than the bear, you just have to be faster than the other camper, right? Yes. Like you don't, you don't need, you're not competing with, with Hill Holiday or Chiat Day or like the, the world's biggest ad agencies, right? Like you're not, you're gonna lose that race, right? They're just, yeah. you're outgunned in every possible way, but that's not the point, right? You don't, you don't need to create the greatest ad in the history of the world. You need to create a better ad than any of your competitors. And yeah, unless you're going up against Old Spice, then you're screwed. <laughs> then you're just, and a, another good point on that is like, you look at, you look at what ads are currently being shown on your uh, uh, product. So like you, you type in a, a key search term for your product and see what other competitors are doing uh, videos. And if there's only a couple of them, three, four, five, or whatever, your video doesn't have to be better than theirs necessarily. Yeah, you want to, you know, show the main features or whatever, and, and you know, show why people would want it. But if you're bidding higher than them, you're going to be showing up more, and you have all that real estate. So you definitely need to be smart when you do marketing because you don't want to have something that's going to turn people away. 
but you also on Amazon, there's not a lot of people doing video right now. Um, and you can jump in and get that, that head start. Yeah. Big deal. Hey, Will, why don't you do me a favor? Can you throw up that, um, that last slide again? So anyone who's still on here has a chance to see it. Yes. We, you, Cause I think we we've handled all our questions, right? Yeah. I think we're good. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to pull up that last slide so you can see where to go for any and all question interest. Um, so, and we'll throw all this out to everyone who attended. We'll send you out um, a link to that landing page. So you will get that and you'll get it very shortly, but I don't, I, you know, go, go check it out. It's worth, it's worth seeing kind of a little bit more information of what they're all about. And then on top of that, um, if you do have questions, reach out to Devin. Um, he, he is, again, it's on that landing page where you can contact him, get a 15 minute discovery call in his calendar. There he is. <laughs> there he is. Um, yeah, so it's definitely worth scheduling, um, that call with him. He'll be able to like, if you're like, I just don't know if it's a fit, he'll be able to answer that question for you. And he, they've turned down, they, you guys probably turn down more clients than you take. We will totally turn you down if we yeah. can't help you hundred percent. Like no problem on that at all. We're, we're, this has been fun. We enjoy this. We like Curtis and his team. This is just, it's just fun to do this period. And if we can't have fun and, and do amazing work for you, we will absolutely uh, let you know that up front. So there's yeah. no zero hard sell with what we do at all. Exactly. Uh, very good. So still no other questions. Good. We're ready to call this a day. Um, again, any questions head over to lighttouch.managedbystats.com. Uh, if you're interested in the course, university.managedbystats.com and, um, you know, code, thank you. The code to get it for $97 through Sunday night is light touch two T's very important, or you won't get the discount code and you'll be mad at me because you think it doesn't work, but it's actually because you messed up. So <laughs> I don't want you to mess up. That's all we have for you guys today. Um, any parting words from anyone? If not, I'll just, I'll sign us off. I think we're good. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you guys for taking the time. I hope you had tons of value on this. Again, um, this is one of our PPC kind of, uh, Oh my goodness, what did I say? Series, series of PPC trainings. Um, so we will have a lot more for you guys um, in the coming weeks. We're going to be doing a boot camp, three day boot camp. Um, I think that's middle of July. And then we are also, you know, we've got another um, company that we're working with on another project mid August. So, and we've also got other trainings in between there. But, you know, we've got a lot of content for you guys. Um, if you have questions about the listing, and um, keyword analysis, uh, just write us to send an email over to support at managedbystats.com and we'll get you taken care of. Otherwise, thank you so much for attending. And uh, Danon, if you want to end it off, we will see you guys later. Take care.